Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Comeback 5000. Coming in live from Southwest London in Battersea Park at the Millennial Arena, Arena, should I say. My name is Lloyd. I'm going to be your commentator for this afternoon's proceedings. And I'm joined by my lovely co-commentator, Becca Howard. Welcome, Becca. Hello. Thanks for having me again. No problem. Lovely to be here. How are you? I'm great, yeah. Um, I can't believe it's been a whole year since last year. Um, the weather is obviously spectacular today. Um, how are you feeling about this? I mean, compared to last time we did it a year ago, my nerves are sky high. Um, I feel like this is my wedding day a little bit. But, uh, I mean, look at the contrast. Look at how much it's changed since last time. I mean, last time we were here, we had people lining the fence, breaking lockdown rules. I saw you. I told Boris. But this time, we're allowed spectators in. We got teas, coffees, beers, food, ice creams, and obviously some naughty races on the track as well. So I'm very excited. I was thinking about that last year, organising it. Not that I had much to do with it. It was all like, can we have spectators? Where are they allowed? Do we have to buy a meal with our pint? You know, all those kind of things. This year, we only had to think about organising the races. I know, I know. We were having to do pork pies on the side just to get someone a pint. But it is a great day. The weather is a very, very mild 20 degrees. There's not much wind in the air down at Battersea. Uh, if you've run here before, then you'll know how fast this track can be. But, uh, yeah, very exciting afternoon of athletics ahead. Uh, if you are watching at home on YouTube, then please do get involved in the live chat. Feel free to fire across any questions, any stats that you've got for us or any uh, words of support for your friends and family that may be racing today. We do have eight races on the agenda today and we'll run you through those races for you. We do start off with six open races in total and then to finish off we have the elite men's race and the elite women's as the finale. Uh, and as you see there on the screen, our first race will kick off at 12.25 with race one and we will be going all the way through our race schedule until our finale, the women's race, at 3.30. So as I say, if you are racing today, please do uh, tag us on anything that you put on social media. Comeback5000 is our official hashtag. Don't be shy. Get your selfies out. And if you are supporting, please let us know on the live stream as well. But I'm going to drop you in it now, Becca. So since last time, you're now engaged. I am engaged. Here we go, on the camera. <laughs> Tell me about it. Um, yeah, we. Were, am I speaking to the stadium right now? <laughs> no, I think we're just talk, talk, talking to the world, really. Um, I think like all of our viewers that are, that are watching are probably keen to know about your other half. Who is he? Where he comes from? You know, we've got to vet this guy okay. because of how much we care about you at Comeback. Exactly. Yeah, OK. Well, his name is James. He'll be popping down a bit later. He didn't want to get, come and help set up, but, you know, understandable. Um, we've just moved house as well, so I think he's actually fitting our washing machine right now. Um, so far, so good. I'm, I'm, I'm liking yeah. what I'm hearing. He sounds like a bit of a handyman. He's ticking um, boxes. And is he military? Am I right? He's in the army, correct. Yeah. Ooh, um, nice. <laughs> He's um, off to Macedonia for six weeks um, next week, so, yeah. Brilliant. Well, excellent. Well, I'll be happy to see him down, and hopefully he shares a beer with us. Um, but back on the track, let's talk a little bit about what we've got this afternoon. We'll go through a few of the races and preview some of the athletes that we are going to see. Um, in our opening races, we've got various clubs. I mean, it's a sea of, of London-based clubs, but we do have athletes that have travelled afar. Uh, in this opening race, I can see that we've got uh, Hillenden AC athletes, London Heathside, Vicky Park, Serpentine, Fulham Running Club, obviously Belgrave Home Club. It's going to be a great mix of uh, various uh, athletes from the local area. And uh, nearer that 25 past 12, 25 past 12, we will run you through the official start list. But on your screens there, you can see uh, the opening uh, list of athletes that will be tying the line in about 10 minutes or so. Later in the afternoon, the races get hotter, the races get faster and faster, and we are going to see some names that you may recognise, including some of the top talents in the UK. And now let's talk a little bit about those elite races, which obviously are going to get a lot of coverage tonight and today, Becca. In the elite men's race, which goes off second last, 
Um, I've been speaking about this race all week and people have been asking me, oh, how fast do you think it'll be one in and who do you think is going to win? And it's been one of those races that is so open. It's one of them where it's, it, it could be anyone on the night. And looking at some of these athletes that are here with their PBs and their season's bests, I'm going to say that this is a race that every single athlete could go sub 14 minutes. I'd agree with that. And I think what makes this so exciting as well is obviously how early on in the season it is. Um, I mean, it is early on, and but this is a distance race. So I don't think, you know, people, people sometimes go to that, well, I haven't started my speed work kind of thing. But this is a 5K. So I think there will be fast times, but it's going to be pretty hard to predict. Yeah, so true. And going down the list in front of me, we've got athletes with, with huge pedigree, not just on the track, but the road, the cross country as well. We have Mohamed Mohamed, who's running for Southampton AC today. He's won the national cross country title five times, most recently uh, in the most recent national cross. He debuted over the half marathon in March with a 62.52. And he ran a 10K on the road in January in Valencia in 28.14. And he actually came fifth in this event at comeback last year so he's returning today he's bringing his younger brother Zachary with him and he's one of the he's one of those athletes that you cannot count outside the top five in any distance uh we've got Phil Sessman uh, he's uh he's a Leeds, Leeds City AC athlete part-time doctor now full-time professional for Adidas he uh debuted in the London Marathon uh, with a 2.12.58 but he's arguably got one of the best ranges in that race, I mean, he's run, he's run a 151 800, a 340 1500, a 401 mile, a 751 3k, and he's run a 1339 5k. He's also run a 10k in the 28s, and he's run a 212 marathon. So, really, he's done it all. So, he's going to be one to watch tonight. Uh, further down the field, we've got Ben Connor, Tokyo Olympian for the marathon, running out of the Steve Vernon stable. He's going to be uh, the fastest in the field with a 1319 on his card. And that's just, that's just getting us started, Becca. Is there anyone that's jumping out of you? Well, something I did see on social media earlier this week is um, actually that four people who have all ran for San Francisco are in this race. Um, so I think that's going to be an interesting, you know, is that going to be a bit of a revival or, you know, where's the rivalry with those four? Um, they've all been doing different things. So that's something I'll also be interested to see. Absolutely. No, you're, t you're totally right, Becca. And um, just coming up on screen now, I'm just having a look. We've got a, uh, a lovely, a lovely little uh, promo video from Pro Direct coming up on the screen. We'll chat about Pro Direct a little bit later on. But if you are in the stadium, you will see a lot of their advertising around the track. Um, but yeah, this men's race, I mean, it's such a diverse race with various specialists on the track, cross country and road. Um, and as you mentioned earlier, it's a season opener for most people on the track. So it's really, you know, we don't really know how well a lot of these athletes are going are, are gonna to be coming out of the blocks with. You can go off their cross-country form. You can go off what they've been doing on the roads. But ultimately, there's nothing like the track. Um, so it's going to be really exciting, I feel. And then obviously... Every run. Every brand. For your first or your fastest. every run with ProDirectRunning.com We've got Poppy Tank that's come over from the States. She's, she is British but she went stateside um, to compete at the NCAA. She's uh, the fastest in the field with a 15.45 on her card and she will be contested at the front with Sam Harrison who just ran a half marathon PB in, in Berlin with a 68.12. She's dropping down in distance tonight. Uh, and various various other athletes like Hannah Irwin, she was second here last year to Jenny Nesbitt. Uh, Megan Davies, she's a sub-16 minute performer. She said to us uh, earlier in the week that she's going to go for the 15.46, which is the Scottish Commonwealth mark. There's so many good athletes today that it's going to be it's going to be hard to, to, to follow it along and hopefully we can do everyone watching the live stream and, and those down here in the stands justice. But... Just five minutes now until our first race. And if we do take our attention to the back straight, we will see the athletes lining up on this one. And in a couple of minutes or so, we will run through the uh, runners and riders in this one. Um, if you are in the stadium, we do have a bar on the home straight. If our lovely assistant, uh, Daniela and Vic, just give us a little wave. There we go. Donning the Nike bucket hats. 
they will be able to serve you your lagers and pale ales. Now, we didn't tell anyone in the build-up to this, but our bar is completely free. So if you want a free beer, whether it's alcoholic from our bar or just next door, a 0% beer from the day's tent, Aidan, give us a wave. Then our bar is completely free. And donations to our prize pot, which is split evenly amongst the winners of our elite races, is optional. But beers are free. I mean, are there any better words in life? Beers are free. What do you reckon, Becca? Yeah, I think um, this is a really, really great opportunity. Like, we would obviously be... It's a bank holiday, right? We'd be Amen. We'd be getting on it anyway. So why not have a free beer and then donate to the winners, who I think we can all agree are incredibly deserving and most likely underfunded. Yeah, amen to that, Becca. I mean, I echo what you just said, totally. I love getting on it, especially on a bank holiday. Uh, and then at the entrance, we've got Summit, our lovely friends from Summit, who have a renovated ambulance, and they're serving teas, coffees, soft drinks, bottles of water, snacks. They've even got some merch. Or you can take a little perch in one of their little Salomon branded seats. I've got I've got Jerry uh, Jerry Sons waving at me from uh, oh yeah and Amri oh hi guys cool we've got all the influencer crew down tonight. It's great to see so many creatives are already down documenting this meeting, and it's going to be a very exciting afternoon. But to the back straight, we're going to run through the start list in race one for the Comeback 5000. From the inside out, from Hillingdon AC, we have Katerina Patterson. Next along from London Heathside, we have Marcus Brown. From Victoria Park Harriers and Tower Hamlets, we have Tony McDowell. From Fulham Running Club, Alice No. From Guildford and Goldman AC, we have Ben Gilmore. From Serpentine RC, we have Peter Clark. Thames Valley Harrier, Chloe Baker. From Cambridge and Coleridge, we have Isabel Mastrolonado. From Belgrave Harriers, it's her home club, Laura Goodson. From Fulham Running Club, we have Liberty Thompson. Next along, we have the Vet 40, Mark Mullen. We then have Cambridge University Heron Hounds Club athlete, Emily Bradley. Next along from Guernsey, Matthew Brown. Another Belgrave Harrier, Chris Warren. Uh, vet 55 from Guildford, we have David Owen Williams. Our fastest female in the field from Steel City Striders, Abby Pierce. Our Vet 40 from Hernhill Harriers, Mohamed Ishmael. From Bournefield Harriers, we have Sam, Sam Bentham. Another home Harrier from Belgrave, Valentin Rigori. And rounding off this field, the fastest in the field is Dominic Woodbridge. This will be race one of the Comeback 5000. So as we approach the last couple of minutes before this race gets off, we're already getting a few comments in the live chat on YouTube. I can see that my old PE teacher, Mr. Endersby, is getting involved. Good to see you, mate. Thank you for your lovely comments. We've also got Dan from Pride Direct, who's out in Boston at the moment, living it up at the marathon. It's great to see you guys getting involved, and I'm really excited to interact with you guys at home on the stream tonight. But on the track is why we're here. And I can see these athletes lined up now. You can just see a little bit of nerves settling in on a couple of these. Don't be nervous, guys. It's only a race. You'll be fine. Quiet for the start, please.
So we are away in race one of the Comeback 5000. There's a lot of people in this stadium that have been waiting a whole year for this moment. And I'm so proud to see it come together and give these athletes, give you fans at home, you fans in South West London, an opportunity to witness one of the most exciting race meetings and events companies in the UK right now. As I can see, bib number 47, that is Sam Bentham from Bournefield Harriers. Bournefield Harriers, sorry, hit the front right away. And he's got a bit of support in the chat with John Tustin. He's rooting for Sam. And he obviously heard you. And he's hit the front right away as they embark on that opening lap. It is 12 and a half laps, the 5,000 metres on the track. It's not done by GPS. You can't get, a, you can't get away with a 4.8K. It's 12 and a half laps in total and this race already splitting up nicely I can see Sam Benton out in front there he's got a Hearn Hill Harrier on his on his shoulder down the back straight this first time and we'll get a we'll get a check on who that is that might be Mohammed Ishmael the vet 40 from Hearn Hill he comes into this race with a with a time of 17.39 as they run through the first 400 and then just a tick outside 75 seconds and this field very very nicely spread out Obviously early days, Becker, but, you know, who's looking comfortable? Well, hopefully everyone at this point, but who's your reckon so far? Who's your money on at the moment? Yeah, early days, I think uh, the Hearn Hill athlete, as we said, that is, um, yeah, Mohammed Ishmael, as you said. And um, he he does have a slower PB than um, the person behind him um, but you know maybe that's maybe that's a bad representation of his fitness maybe he's improved a lot um, he's gone out fairly hard so let's let's see how he goes yeah you're right I'm just seeing there it's, um, Ishmael's now attacking it on and pushing it on from Sam Bentham and, and, and back in third it's actually an athlete that we've not got a, got a club attached for that's Mark Mullen the vet 40 he's an 1804 athlete so he's gone out with some, t in, 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 with some intent um, but yeah, Ishmael, he's making a break early doors. He's got about a five metre gap now on Bentham. But uh, it's a long way, the 5K. It's not one and lost in the first kilometre. It's generally one and, one and lost from about three or four K onwards. So maybe these two can start to work together. But how good, how good is this? How good is this? It's a great sight, and I think kudos to you and you know everyone involved in the organising. I'm not going to take any credit for this because I didn't do this. This is a lot of your hard work, Lloyd, and I think it's a testament to you to see it all unfold today. Thank you, Rebecca. I really appreciate that. There's so many, there's so many fingers in this pie and, and, and cogs in the wheel that make this possible. And I know you don't want to take any credit, but you are, you are part of this. Uh, we wanted to keep it authentic and, and and bring back the old commentary team from the first time we did it. Um, I mean, we haven't been that busy on commentary gigs since, so we couldn't have been that very good. Like, we couldn't have been that good. Have you had any commentary gigs since? I've been asked to do loads and loads and loads, but I turned them all down because I, you know, have an exclusivity clause with Comeback 5000. I would only do it for the best event there is. Oh, my, my invites must have been lost in the post then. Yeah, I bet you're turning them all down, BBC, Eurosport, Flowtrack. You're a lady in demand. They asked me to replace Gabby Logan. I said it wouldn't be fair on her. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching Gabby, but yeah, watch yourself because Becca Howard's on your shoulder. But back to the track action. Ishmael's out in front. He's got about a 10 or 15 metre gap back to Bentham. And Mark Mullen is probably closing up a little bit on, uh, on second place Bentham. And these three are well spread across that back straight as they come down to their start area. And we'll get a split as they come through this. Three minutes 52 or so on the clock for Ishmael. Three or four seconds back for Bentham. He just takes a little, little look on his watch. And further back in the field, there's some great battles going on. And in, in, in the chat, we've got some more support for Mark Mullen. Great to see friends and family getting involved. But it's, it's, just, it's just really nice to see, you know, after such a tough couple of years with the pandemic. But it was a really tough couple of years on the sport, I feel, as well. You know, lack of competition clubs were shutting down with no training nights you weren't able to catch up with your buddies going for your social runs and whatnot and it's one of those things that I think we take for granted the ability to run with others is such a powerful part of the sport that I know you and me are both passionate about and when you tee that up with some competition get some good passionate heads around the table the product that we're watching is is powerful isn't it 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it's been such an interesting few years for the sport, actually. And what's interesting is we had this, you know, lack of lack of meeting up, as you said. But what we've had going on in the background is this development in the technology and the shoes that is so, such a prominent oh, feature. Why did you mention shoes? <laughs> shall I shall I leave that till later? <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that one. We'll talk about shoes later, ladies and gentlemen. But what a nightmare that's been this week talking about shoes. But no, you're right. No, sorry, I interrupted you there, Becca. Please continue. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it needs to be a negative thing. I think it is transforming the sport in a really good way. And there's no doubt the effect it's having. Um, and I don't think, you know, so long as people aren't breaking the rules, obviously I know that you were stating the importance of making sure we were wearing the legal shoes today. Yeah, it was. it's a tough one. You know, I, I really sympathise for athletes because... You know, I work for I work for Nike, which are ultimately the first company that brought out the super shoe. And me as a runner, I can run on the track on spikes because I've run in spikes for years. But there might be athletes that have never run in spikes before, and there's not really many shoes now available from from brands other than spikes that are legal. So we did have a lot of questions in the week leading in, and what was legal and what wasn't legal. And it's t- it's tough because I can sympathise with them, but at the same time, you know, we have got a, you know, we've got a license for this meet. There are qualifying times that people are going to go for and we have to make sure that these re- results aren't voided. But um, we will talk about shoes across the afternoon and the evening. But I just want to go back to the front of this race because as we were talking about shoes, carbon plates and stack heights, Sam Bentham, he's back in the front. He's, par- he's made the pass on Ismail and he's put about five or six metres into him down this back straight. And as we just click over on the clock... Six minutes and 39 seconds. He takes a look at his watch as he goes through the starting area there. He's looking really strong. Ishmael still looking in control. And those two are well away and further back in the field. Mark Mullen may be starting to feel that earlier pace now. And he's starting to be a bit swallowed by a group. I can see a couple of Belgrave Harrier vests in there. There's yeah. also a Guildford athlete on the back. I think that group looks really strong, actually. And it'll be interesting to see if they collectively can start you know, closing down on those front two leaders. I can see John Sanderson there. He's wearing the white pacer vest. It's great to see that he's pace making this group. We've got number 28 there. Who's that? That's, That's Abby, Abby Pierce. Pierce. We mentioned her in the preview in the week leading in. She is our fastest female in this field. And she is really attacking this race and sitting on the back of this group. And, you know, ultimately, we've spoken about this in the past, Becca. You know, you don't need to be at the front of a race to necessarily be having a successful time. You know, you might just be here for a PB or attacking your own goals. And that's why every single person in this race is equally important. It's not just about the winners. Yeah, I think that's something that we as a country actually do so, so well is just that time trial. I mean, everyone, everyone knows the, the famous Watford Wednesdays and um, this is another testament to that legacy, I think. Yeah, you're totally right. The uh, the first Watford Wednesday was actually last week. I completely forgot it was on. As uh, number 22, that's our CNC athlete, came in Coleridge. That's Isabel Mastrolanado. Probably one of my favourite names of the whole afternoon. Just rounding the bend into the home straight. And as she comes down, she will see the number seven on the board in front of her. Signifying seven laps to run. As Bentham rounds the turn and he will see six laps left to run. And just talking about shoes, I can see Sam Bentham. He's wearing the Bowman Track Club Nike Dragonflies. And as a nerd like myself, I've got to say, they are fire. They're very sexy. I can agree with that. (laughs) I'm surprised you didn't wear a pair today. You went for the Adidas Gazelles? Yeah, old school. I've I've gone for the Air Max TNs, just in case, you know, I need to run. Do a bit of track, do a bit of track, but I think these, I think the stack height on these are probably illegal to be honest. Who knows? But back on the track, Bentham's really taking this race by the scruff of the neck. He's probably put about 80 metres into Ishmael now, and our second placed athlete, the Hearn Hill, the Hearn Hill runner, is just starting to be swallowed up a little bit by that chasing group, which is headed up by our pacer John Sanderson. And on the on the tail of Sanderson, we've got our two Belgrave athletes. Our Guildford runner, I believe that may be Ben Gilmore. And I can still see Abby Pierce there. She's just making a pass on Mark Mullen down the back straight. Yeah, I really hope she can stay on that group. I think that's going to do her a world of good when it comes to those final few laps and it really starts to hurt. I think Sam just looks like he's going from strength to strength down there. He's got winner's legs, you know. 
winner's legs. What a term. I'm stealing that one for later. Yeah, you're right. Spentham's looking great. He's got a lovely gait, a real nice bounce in his stride. And this is ultimately a bit of a time trial for him as we approach 10 minutes on the clock. There'll be five left to run for Bentham. Ishmael still there in second, but that chasing group starting to close up now. Abby Pearce looking really strong into the home straight. Mark Mullen still there. I can see our serpentine athlete. That's number 64, Peter Clark, the Vet 50. He's just chasing that group down. Number 27 looking strong into the home straight as well. That's Katarina Patterson from Hillenden AC. And these athletes are just trying to latch on to the one in front. That's all they need. They need a shoulder to sit on and get through that next 200, 300 metres. And that could be the difference between hitting a PB today. So that 2K mark, Lloyd, it hurts in a 5K, right? What's yes. your, <laughs> your thought process at this point in a race? It's funny, actually. So I've got an athlete that I coach running in one of the earlier races tonight, today. And it's his first time on the track. Um, went and bought a brand new pair of Dragonflies. Because I was, I was like, don't run in spikes, you'll ruin your legs. But what else can you run in? He didn't have anything else. So Dragonfly was the best bet. So I said, go get a pair of Dragonflies. Did a little session on the track. And then he was like, right, how do I run the 5K? And I said, well, the bet, your best bet, that first 3K, you want it to be free. And that saying means, you know, you want to get through that first 3K using as little energy as possible and feeling as best as possible whilst maintaining that race pace that you go and set out at. And then ultimately, I find in my racing history, that fourth K is the hardest one. That's when generally the pacemaker may drop out. Race moves start being made by leaders and people in second and third. And that is really do or die time, sink or swim. And I said to him, if you can hang on in that fourth K, anyone can hang on for two and a half laps, can't they? You'd like to think so. Could you hang on for two and a half laps? <laughs> I've been known to not so well. Back in your heyday of older shot Farnham and District. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to let that lie, Becca. We're going to tell everyone your history as a runner as well. Where did your running start? I started when I was a tiny baby person, when I was, I think, nine, going down to older shot Farnham and District, which is obviously like a hugely popular club, but I just happened to be from older shot. So for me, it was just my local club. Little did I know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> And there it started, your journey journey through the, through the ranks. As I can see, John Sanderson's done his work for the day. Go and get yourself a beer, mate. Treat yourself. But uh, Sam Bentham's entering the straight once again. He's really digging in, looking down at his shoes. I don't know whether he's saying, come on, dragonflies, get me around this next lap. It's the Bowman no, effect. It's the Bowman effect. As he's heading down to the finish area, he's going to just tick over. On the clock, 12.50 on the clock. I think he's got three laps left to run, if my eyes are correct. It's really splitting up in second and third. Belgrave taking the honours there. And I can see that's Chris Warren in third. Sorry, Valentin Rigori in third. And he's having a really strong run. He was one of the athletes that I did pip in the preview. Looking further back in the field, Abby Pierce is still there. She has made that pass on Mark Mullen, who's looking strong still. And Katarina Patterson from Hillenden goes through the finish gantry, and she's still there. But on the back straight, it's Sam Bentham. Another look at the watch. Trust me, Sam, that clock is not getting any lower. You've got to go, mate. This is your time. That last kilometre. This is where your PBs can be lost and won. And a real resurgence in second place by our Belgrave Harrier. Looking really strong. We'll get a name as he comes round this turn. That's number 157. That is Chris Warren. He comes into this race with a 17.30. And he told us that he wanted to be in a quicker race. So he's definitely confident today. Does he have it in his legs over the last 800? To chase down Sam Bentham. What do we reckon, Becca? Yeah, it's interesting he says he wanted to be in a faster race. I would say, I'm not sure who's, if that was his coach's decision. If it was, I think he's made a really, really good choice by having him in this race. Second is probably, you know, arguably the best place you want to be in a time trial. And he does actually look like he's closing that gap down. Yeah, you're right. This last 700, 600 metres is going to be a really interesting contest between Bentham and the Belgrave Harrier Warren. 
And there's some real good support in the chat for Bentham with Tom Pearson cheering his mate on. He said, go on, Sam. He's rooting for you. And anyone in the stadium, if you're in the stands, please do come forward to the viewing area in front of the bar for this last lap so we can get behind these athletes. It is about 20 degrees out here, so they need your support. As Chris Warren goes through, 600 left to run. He's got about 30 metres to catch up for Bentham. As Bentham rounds the turn and he will hear the bell this time. And he's going to have traffic to negotiate. As further back in the field, Abby Pearce and Katarina Patterson having a great battle down the back straight. This penultimate time, it's going to be interesting to see who's going to take the honours in the, in the women's race there. As Bentham hits the bell, 400 metres left to run. 15.37 on the clock. We could be looking at a massive PB for the Bourneville Harrier. As Chris, Chris Warren follows suit, one lap left to run. Sam Bentham takes a look inside him. He opens up the stride down the back straight this last time. He goes to the arms and legs. Gets every little ounce out of those dragonflies. 250 metres left to go. It's Bentham from Warren. It looks like it's Bentham's to lose. Half a lap to run. We're just ticking over 16 minutes. 16.15 on the clock. We could be looking at a 17 minute 5k here. It's still Bentham. 150 left to run. He shouts, come on. Come on, Sam. You've got this. He enters the home straight this last time. Let's get behind him, ladies and gents. It's Sam Bentham. He's going to take the win in race one at the comeback 5,000 metres. But watch the clock. We could be looking at a sub-17 minute here. 20 metres left to run. It's going to be Bentham for the win. Watch the clock. 16.49 unofficially. A massive personal best there. That's about a 50-second PB. Huge run in there from Bentham as Chris Warren comes over the line just outside 17. I think it was 17 on the nose. That's, that's another 30-second PB there. So that's a huge run. Amazing run, guys. As number 140, that's Valentin Rigori. He enters the straight this last time. Valentin comes into this race with a 17.46. And he's going to smash that mark with a 17.25 unofficial. Huge runs there as Ishmael. Ishmael comes over the finish line. Mohamed Ishmael from Hernhill Harriers just outside 17.34. What a battle between our two girls there as well, just both coming in. Really yeah. Really good run. Katarina, Katarina Patterson just getting over the top of Abby Pierce there. Just outside 17.45. And Mark Mullen, who was one of our early, early runners up there in the top three, comes over the finish. Great work from our race one athletes as the rest of the field power down the home straight, chasing their own goals and PBs. This is great start to the day and great to see. That's number 14, Belgrave Harrier driving around the final turn. That's Laura Goodson. She's got a PB of 18.30. She's got 18.20 on the clock. Come on, girl, you could get it. That's it. There's your PB. Last few metres. Great running from all these athletes. Fantastic. That's number 25 entering the home straight as well. Alice No from Fulham Running Club. She comes into this race with a 19.15 on her clock. Smash that mark. And we're just waiting for the final finishes in this first race. Striding down the home straight. That is our Cambridge and Coleridge athlete that we mentioned earlier. That's Isabel. Mastro Leonardo as well. Great running, ladies, all the way. You've smashed it. So 19.30 on the clock. We've still got at Isabel Mastro Leonardo with 300 metres left to run. 
The stage is yours, Isabel. You're going to smash this last lap. Great to see Cambridge and Collingwood vests here from the east of England coming down to southwest London. I think that was a really amazing run from everyone there. I think most people I've looked at got a PB in that run. It was awesome. Yeah, that awesome was a great start. opening race, weren't it? Yeah, really, really exciting. It was really good to see the, the positions at the front changing in the first half. You know, that kept, that kept it really exciting. And yeah, that, that, was, that was a great opener. And, and look at this. Isabel absolutely smashing it. 150 left to run. Let's get behind her, ladies and gents. I want to see everyone on their feet behind Isabel Mastrolanado from Cambridge and Coleridge. She's come a long way today to run this. She's got 100 metres left to run. She's given it absolutely everything down this home straight this final time. Great running, Isabel. 50 metres left to run. You can do it. Absolutely fantastic, that. Awesome to see. Well done. Well done, Isabel. And well done to all of our athletes in that first race. Some unbelievable times there. So while we have a moment to just digest that first race, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the, uh, some of the sponsors that have made this happen today. Uh, it's, no, it's no secret that without sponsorship money and without good passionate heads around the table, we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't even be able to make these things happen. So first of all, thank you to our title sponsor, Pro Direct Running. Really, really appreciative of your support, not just from a financial perspective, but your ideas and your passion for the sport. It's a small team with Katie, Tom and Dan, all runners themselves, keen runners. They love the sport and they've brought passion, innovative ideas and they've also helped us set up this morning, so I can't really, can't really say much more for them. So thank you so much to ProDirect, and we're very, very excited to work with you in the future. And also thank you to our other sponsor, TripAdvisor. Big thank you to Justin Reed and the team there who have helped us elevate this meeting. Again, put some massive ideas forward for the future for comeback, and we cannot wait to explore them with you. And Thank you to our uh, company, Days, who have come down with their, with their very vibrant tent of 0% alcohol beers and our Summit as well, who will be supplying our teas, coffees and snacks. You all have a pivotal part in these events. And thank you so much from me and Becca and the team at Comeback. Yeah, I think we've just got a... Uh... Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. every run with prodirectrunning.com So, as the second race starts to prepare itself on the back straight, so give us a couple of minutes and we will run through uh, the start list. We do have a little bit of time spare until that one goes off it doesn't actually officially start until 12:57, so we have about uh, six or seven minutes uh, but i can see i can see that uh that that sea of vests approaching the back straight but in the meantime i'm joined by our race one winner which was sam bentham and we're going to get him in for an interview So Sam, race winner, number one, you're still out of rest my man, I'm not surprised after that effort. Now when we do race interviews at Comeback, we like to be a little bit different. I don't want to be like, so you know, what training have you done at this point? But how's training been going mate? <laughs> uh, pretty good, um, I'm, I've only been doing this a couple of years, uh, as a lockdown runner, so um, Amazing. it's... Um, Amazing. It's um, yeah, it's I'm not, still not something I'm you know entirely entirely used to a hard winter's work, um, but uh, it's been it's been really good. Um, I did a really good 10k a couple of weeks ago, so I think things have been going really really well, and um, yeah, just just really pleased. And everyone was really confident coming in. Um, Is this your first track race? Um, 
First one for about 10 years, I did a couple of 800s as a junior. That's and, amazing. And I did for a long time. But, um, amazing. And talk, talk to me about your club, Bourneville Harriers. So how do, is that a local area club? Yeah, exactly. I, um, I live in Birmingham, uh, so up by, up by the Cadbury factory. And it's Brilliant. Bourneville Dark Chocolate. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a brand new member actually. I joined joined last week. Obviously, starting in in the pandemic, there was there was no club stuff to speak of. So, yeah, I ran by myself for a year and a half. Jo- joined up really recently. Lovely club. Shout out to everybody there. Everyone has been super helpful, super friendly, getting me in. Um, it's not easy, you know, walking into a, a room full of runners you don't know, but um, everyone's made me feel really welcome. So that's fantastic, mate. What a story. Well, first of all, thank you for coming down to our race today, but thank you for taking the first win as well from me and the rest of the team at Comeback, mate. Will you be back? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't, I can't not now, right? I set, set a 50-second PB. I can't not come back again. <laughs> you got to win race two next time. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just doing my best like everybody else. So um, Good for you, mate. Thank you so much, Sam, and have a great afternoon. Are you sticking around for a few beers? Uh, I, I don't really drink, but I'll stick around for a few soft drinks and uh, watch or, the elite races. Or the 0% from days. This is what I'm on, mate. I'm on the 0% stuff. So. We'll give it a go, then. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> Help yourself, mate. All right, mate. Well, congratulations. Get yourself a warm down going, and uh, we'll catch you later on in the evening. Thanks very much, Lloyd. No problem. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Thanks, Sam. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. So that was Sam Bentham, our race one winner. Great to hear from him and get his thoughts. He was just telling me the story about how he found his local club during lockdown. He's only been running a couple of years. Great, great stories. But back to this second race in the Comeback 5000. We're going to run through the runners in this one for you. Okay, so from the inside out, in lane one, we have Asher Brooks. From Belgrave, we have Stephanie Hewitt. Next along, we have Frederick Levy. One of my good friends. So next along, we have Will Gallimore. From Highgate Harriers, it's Alex Burns. The Southampton AC athlete, Sarah Winstone. Next, next along, we have James Turner. Next along the line, we have Matthew Davies. Next along we have the Belgrave Harrier, Olivia Papinau. From London Heathside we have Tom Fancett. Next along is Scott Burrell. Our next athlete on the start line is Eddie Rolls. From Cambridge and Coleridge is Daniel Zayla Fletcher. The Tombridge athlete, he's come from Kent, it's Cameron Chambers. And next along we have Rose Penville, Penfold. And to round off the field we have James Ramsey. This is race number two in the comeback 5,000. If you're on the stream and you're wondering what I'm doing when I'm looking down at my phone, I'm texting all of our pacemakers and saying, um, are you going to be here anytime soon? Ed Goddard, if you are in the vicinity, please do come and make yourselves known, because I would like to not have a heart attack before the end of today, please. Lloyd Kempson is a man that wears many, many hats. Race organiser, commentator, influencer. Oh, stop it. 
Uh, I was actually going to put my bucket out on, but I'm a bit gutted to be honest because I've got to wear this headset. But I did. I I, thought, I I bought a new bucket out for today, and actually I bought five others and started giving them out to all, all, all of the crew. And I'm the only one that can't wear it. A bit gutted to be honest, but uh, is what it is. They're just taking to the line now. So yeah, this will be race number two as we fly through these eight races today and they get faster and faster and faster also important to say just missed a couple off on the start list there i'm just going to run through the final four we also have charlie mccarthy who's running for best athletics tonight we also have um i'm sorry i don't have the rest on my list apologies for that ladies and gents but i know charlie mccarthy's definitely on there but we'll call them out as they run as they run round and as they uh, make themselves known in the race Great news, Ed Goddard's going to be 10 minutes until he arrives. See, look, he must have heard. He's probably somewhere in South West London now. He's here, his name. Never in doubt. We've got a uh, comment on the YouTube channel from Tr Trackstar saying, watching this on the treadmill. Yeah, that's uh, that's Alfie Manford. He'll be watching that. Um, I did a little podcast we've been chatting about today. It's great to see that he supported us with uh, his massive Instagram account. You know, we've got to use his influences, do you know what I mean? But yeah, a lot of support in the chat, especially for Sam, who won that first race. Uh, a lot of good lucks from people. It's really it's really interesting to see friends and families and club members from, from who's on the track at that time. But we're going to quieten down now just for this race number two. And we'll check back in once that goes off. Quiet for the start, please. So away in this race, number two of the Comeback 5000. All of our races today do have pacemakers with splits that they've got to hit. And we'll run through the runners as they come round this second time. But a very, very hotly contested race here. Packed full with 20 or so athletes. Great to see. And this race already in that one i didn't know about i still don't really know about but it is imper it's imperative that it goes goes ahead including licenses officials first aiders health and safety and even making sure we got that fancy red and white tape but honestly a massive thank you to the guys at friday night under the lights for the work that you've done to get this meeting off the ground we couldn't do it without you trust me we couldn't do it without you but back to the front of this race we have number 61 there, that's our Tombridge AC athlete. That's Cameron Chambers, he comes into this race with a 17 minute performance on his card. So he'll be looking to run inside that tonight, or today should I say. I can see further back in the field, Charlie McCarthy. Just tucking in on the rail there. As they go through the first 600 metres and just a tick outside, 1 minute 45 seconds. We've had a shout out for Blair from uh, Trisha Wilson. If you're listening to the Tannoy Blair, which I probably wouldn't be if I was racing, but um, yeah, Trisha says good luck. Yeah, Blair Wilson, our vet 35 from Blackheath from Bromley. I think he was one of the athletes that we didn't call out. So we'll definitely give you some airtime, mate. Sorry about that. But uh, you continue focusing on what's going on in front of you and not listen to our, our tones. But yeah, lots of support for Blair in the chat. And it's great to see, like I said, I've said a few times already, it's great to see the support and I'm, I'm very excited to see some of the questions that, that do come through the live chat on the stream. So if you are sitting at home or you're on a treadmill like Alfie and you're having a cup of tea with a biscuit and you've got a budding question that you want to ask me or Becca Howard, maybe it's about my hats, maybe it's about Becca's engagement or maybe it's about what's going on, on the track, 
please do ask away and we will do our best to answer all of them. As Chambers still there, sat on the shoulder of our pacemaker, I can see that's number one, uh, yes, number 17 from Belgrave Harriers. That's our leading lady in this race, that's Stephanie Hewitt. Apparently, we've got a few notes on Stephanie Hewitt, actually. She says that she hates cross-country, but she loves the track. But she still ran every single Surrey League cross-country fixture. If that doesn't say club athletics, what does, Becca? Committed to the cause. Absolutely, and she actually set a PB. Um, at one of the Friday night under the lights races last year uh, and I'm being told that her brother is Michael Hewitt and he's a professional football for, footballer for Air United not really quite sure how that's going to help her in 5,000 metres but it's always good to know isn't it claim to fame how did we get that name uh, that'll definitely be Steve Gardner from Earl Grove he, he's, um, if he went on pointless his special topic would be Belgrave Harriers he would definitely get pointless answers on anything about Belgrave have you got any claim to fames? Any names you want to drop? Anyone famous? Absolutely not. <laughs> not one famous person you've come across <laughs> that you're friends with? Um, I don't think so. Is, Ross true. Murray, that's my claim to fame. <laughs> oh yeah, Ross Murray, Olympian. He'll be with us in the, uh, in the commentary gantry in a few hours' time if he gets here on time. Well, he'll actually probably be at the bar at some point. But back to the front of this race, it's still Chambers tucked in behind the pacemaker as our active leader. That's number 77 from London Heathside. We'll check who that is. That is that is Tom Fancy. He comes into this race with a 17.10. So great pace up the front of this one. And they've just got to stick with this pacemaker and see how far they can stick on this pace for PBs today. It's really great to see that being such a sort of close race at the front. Unlike last time, it spread open quite easily. But um, yeah, this is this looks like it's going to be a real team effort. We're getting some chat. We're getting some chat in the uh, on the live on the live stream. A lot of support for Scott Burrell, Mr. Endersby saying he wants to have a tenner on him. I tell you what, I'll do a deal, Dave. Don't worry about putting a tenner on him. Click the donation link in the description of this video, and you can donate ten pound to our prize pot contribution. How's that? Sweet as. We've also got a lot of support in here for Matthew. We've got viewers from Canada watching. A lot of support for Matthew Davies. More support for Scott Burrell. Absolutely fantastic to see that we've got people from the other side of the world watching come back. Shame they've got to listen to us though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to say hi, Grace. I know who that is. She's a Belgrave Harrier saying, go Steph. Hi, hi Grace. <laughs> yes, we got Grace Richardson on the, on the chat. So it's a London Heathside athlete. That is Tom Francis now taking our active lead behind the pacemaker. And uh, our Tombridge athlete, Chambers, he's just taken a sit on the rail. Further back in the field, we've got a third place athlete from Highgate. That's number 56. As we hear a shout for, for our athletes as they come round the home straight this time. That's Asher Brooks in third. We've also got Will Gallimore from Clapham Chasers. He's running, uh, he's running today. He was asking me about shoes and spikes all week. He's claimed to fame. He's best mates with Harry from McFly. But he didn't know that, did you? But I know Harry will be watching on the stream. Harry, if you are watching, give us a shout in the chat. We've touched on it a little bit today, but obviously that what we're so keen to you know, spread the word about more is the prize money. Um, and there is a prize for the fastest open woman in this race. Um, and that looks like it could be coming from Steph in this race. So we'll see how this unfolds. Yeah, it's great to add incentive within a race. Um, and, and Steph Hewitt, you know, she's, she's tucked in there nicely in a great group of, uh, of club runners there. And she's just got to stay on the heels of the athletes in front of her. And I feel that she will be taking home the, taking home the money in that prize, uh, which, was, which is great, as you say. And there's a lot of prize money going on tonight, especially later in the, uh, in the elite, elite races. If you're not aware, we do have a guaranteed £1,000 for the winner of the men's and elite races. And then we have our prize pot contribution fund, which last time around we raised £1,505. And that was split evenly uh, amongst Jenny Nesbitt and Phil Norman. And if you are watching the stream, you can donate directly. You can donate as little as £1 all the way up to 250 quid. Now, I know Rushi's put the bills up and everything's a little bit tighter. But if you do have a couple of quid lying around, please, please do donate. And all of that money goes to the athletes. All of that money goes towards furthering their career on training camps, kit, you name it. Nights out on the lash, whatever gets you there. Back to the front of this race. These two are away and gone now. Pacemakers dropped out, so it's between themselves. 
to chase the times. And it's still our London Heathside athlete, Tom Fancy on the rail with Chambers from Tombridge on his shoulder. As we just tick off another minute of this race, 7.50 on the clock. And these two are well away now. They've got to work together. But our third place athlete will get a look as he comes round. He's, he's distanced himself from the rest of the field and he started to get on the hunt for these front two. That is number 60. That is Scott Burrell, who we've got a lot of support in the chat for. Scott Burrell's going well and he's started to make the close on the front two. There you go. Celebrities in the chat. Harry Judd's in the chat. Look at that. See, we don't mess about our comeback. We get the big guns down. What's your claim to fame? Um, my claim to fame? Um, I met Mo Farrell once. That's probably it. Haven't we all? All right. You didn't say <laughs> it, did you? On, sorry, sorry, guys. Just get a bit, of, get a bit aggy up here in the commentary <laughs> box. So you don't get that on BBC, do you? You don't get that. Not on air, anyway. <laughs> no, you don't get Gabby Logan having it out with Denise Lewis, but you do it come back. But yeah, it's great to see Harry in the chat. Good to see you, mate. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a good uh, Easter Easter weekend. Got a lot of support for Cameron Chambers saying and apparently he's going to burn it up with 300 metres left to run. But from where I'm sitting, it don't look like he's going to leave it till then. He started to just open up and turn the screw a little bit on fan sitting and a little gap there of a stride is opening up. As they head down the back straight, Scott Burrell's still there in third. Well clear of fourth. He's got a lot of open ground to make up if he wants to get after these front two. And Steph Hewitt still tucked in that group. She just needs to just needs to stay on this group as a couple of the athletes make a pass on her. She's now actually active second female in this race. We'll get a look on who is the leader there for that competition within this race. We've got viewers from Cyprus watching. Stephen Blake said that he's watching in the office. Stay on them, Steph. Great to see. But Steph, you are getting a lot of support there from the Belgrave team. And it is actually Sarah Winstone who has overtaken her. So I hope that that will um, end up being a really good race between them. Come on, girls. You've got that prize money to fight for. And not ruling out number 29. That's our third place female from Highgate Harriers. That's Rose Penfold. Sorry, Fulham Running Club, not Highgate. Very similar vest. Sorry, guys. But that's uh, Penfold who's still there in third. Just tucked in behind Charlie McCarthy. Will Gallimore still there. Come on, Will. You've got this, mate. But back to the front, down the back straight. It's really interesting race. He's starting to transpire now. We've still got Chambers on the front. Fancit from his side's checking his watch, but he's still there. He's still in contention for this. But the athlete to watch out for is Scott Burrell in third. He started to make the close on that gap. And he's down to about 10 or 15 yards now. He's looking great, isn't he? He's looking really comfortable and probably just needs a few more metres and he's going to get a bit of a sniff at this win, I reckon. What do you think? I, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. He's really opening up his stride. Absolutely. It's a lot more support in the chat for Fulham Running Club. A very distinctive vest from the uh, South West London running scene. And Penfold is representing Fulham proudly today going back to the first female in this race sarah winstone's really hanging on well with that group of boys there hope they can carry her through to a, a pb yeah it'd be lovely if she could uh, take take the prize take the pb and take the glory that's that would be an absolute trio of triumph but yeah back to the front look at this race now Chambers has really opened up on Fancit. Scott Burrell's looking like he's going to approach the pass on second. And it could be a two-horse race, but it's still currently three in contention. But Chambers looks strong, doesn't he? He looks confident in that stride. I don't know what you think, Becca. Yeah, I, I agree. He looks really good. Oh, we've seen an overtaking there. Well done. That's Scott Burrell now making the pass. He's gone up into second. Fancit takes a look inside. It's always a telltale sign, isn't it? Athlete looks behind them you know they're struggling or they're super confident it's one of the two isn't it yeah I mean we've got we've got four laps left that's enough to sort of have a little bit of a lull and then bring it back for the finish I think so we'll see I think Scott Burrell's got half his phone contacts in the chat today we've got another lad that's getting after it with the support with Ashley Connington he said there's not much faster than super Scotty Burrell and it looks like it's gonna and obviously we've got Chambers on the front who we know he's got a dangerous last kick in him do you know what I mean he's got a last 300 of, of real speed so this is going to be a very interesting last couple of laps. I'm very excited to see it pan out. 
But if you are in the stadium today, ladies and gents, feel free to access our bar. Our beers are completely free. All we ask is for you to consider donating to our prize pot fund and all of that money goes to the athletes. I just want to talk about Olivia, who's on the back straight at the moment. I, um, I'm so sorry, Olivia. I don't want to try and insult you by pronouncing your last name. <laughs> but she is actually, um, according to our stat man, Steve, she's the MVP for Belgrave Harriers. She scored the most points during the cross-country season um, for the club. Amazing effort. And that included a silver at the Southern Road Relays. So it's really great to see this turn out today. Absolutely love that from you, Olivia. And you are smashing it out there. She rounds the turn into the home straight. Back to the front of this one there. Scotty Burrell, he's starting to get a bit itchy, itchy feet. He's up on the shoulders of Chambers now. What's he going to do? Is he going to sit in or is he going to make the pass and stretch him early? So it's only 800 now. Two laps. Not, it's not a lot of running and track running, is it? No. You know, you can go and hang on. Or do you wait? for when the moment is really right. I suppose it depends on what tools you've got in your armoury, doesn't it? Do you know what? If you're feeling good, just, I'd say, go for it. Break them early. Get that gap. And easy go easy for it. us sitting here, though, isn't it? So easy. With a beer. Drinking pims. Literally. So, yeah, Chambers is still our active leader. Scotty Burrell just tucked in on the rail. Great to see a £10 donation from Dave Endersby. Thank you very much, sir. We've got shouts in the chat for Sarah Winstone. Her current PB is 1750, but it looks like she's on for a huge personal best. But it's a two horse race in this one, I feel, with Chambers stretching Burrell down the back straight for this penultimate time. When they come round the belt, they'll hear the bell this time. That'll signify 400 metres left to run. 14.34 on the clock with one and a half laps left. And it's still Chambers from Burrell. Our third placed athlete is Tom Fancy. He's away in clear in third. Further back in the field, we have our Belgrave Harriers. We have Fulham Running Club. We have Guildford. Great local representation for South West London and Surrey. But into the straight, this penultimate time. It's still Chambers on the rail, taking the shortest route. Scotty Barrel just sitting on his shoulder, waiting for the right time to kick. And it's going to be won and lost in this last circuit of the track. We hit the bell. 400 metres left to run. 15, 16 on the clock. It's still Chambers from Burrell. Slight gap just opening up between the front two. Can Burrell respond? Do you know what? Chambers has run a really, really good race here and it would be great to see him hold on to that win. Yeah, absolutely. But look at this. Burrell is starting to stir down the back straight list last time. He's getting back onto that shoulder. Does he have it in him to go past? Does he wait for the final straight? 250 metres left to run. If you're in the stadium, come down to those hurdles. Get behind these athletes. It's 200 left to run in this race. Number two at the comeback, 5,000. It's still Chambers on the rail. Burrell just in his slipstream. Burrell pu pulls out into lane two and makes the pass. With 150 left to run, it's still Burrell. Chambers has got to react into the home straight this final time. It's Burrell for the win. But here comes Chambers from Tunbridge. The Tunbridge athlete is coming. Can Scotty Burrell hang on as we race down to the home straight? On the finish, it's going to be a photo. Oh, what a finish there between Scotty Burrell and Cameron Chambers. We will have to look on the photo. I think Scott Burrell just took the win there and held off the Tunbridge athlete. What as, a race. As Tom Fancy comes over the line. And the rest of the field battle down the home straight. What a last 200 metres, Becca. <laughs> that was really, really good. Love to see that. that well done, so, Lance. That was so exciting. I didn't even get a clock on it. I didn't even get the time. Whew, what a win. What a win there for Scotty Burrell. But a great race from Chambers. You know what I mean? He took a lot of the lead early on and he pushed that pace on. Yeah, and I think it would be easy to, you know, be broken when you feel someone coming up on your shoulder. And he didn't do that. He hung on really, really well. It was a real fight to the end. Absolutely, and I feel there's our leading female. Massive support down the home straight there. Great to see our athletes battling away down our home straight. We'll just click the, click, uh, check the clock. That was 17.27 for our leading female for Sarah Winstone. Massive PB. Well done, Steph. Absolutely massive PBs there for our race. 
for our race winners in the female races. Will Gallimore's coming down the home straight, battling all the way. Go on, Will. You've got it, mate. Great running there. Stephanie Hewitt's coming down now. So Sarah Winstone is confirmed as our winner there for one of the prizes that we were able to attain for today's event. She has won a lactate threshold assessment test from track analysis. So she will be able to be a lab rat for the day and get all the numbers that she needs for the rest of her track season so that uh, her Strava looks proper naughty. You into lactate? Just seeing there on the screen the finish. Look at that. The sprint finish. We've just seen a slow mo replay. It's like watching Ford Super Sunday, this. Scott Burrell just holding off Cameron Chambers and he even had the effort, uh, energy after to stop his watch. And that's some, that's some confidence, that. But a lot of support in the chat for both of those athletes. You know, Cameron Chambers, he can't be too despondent from that. A fantastic race. And I hope he's happy. Hope he's happy with his efforts. But what a finish there in race two. It's only race two. Brilliant, brilliant race. So we will get Scotty Burrell up for an interview once he's, uh, once he's made his way down. It must be hard to finish a race, have to go to the podium, then walk past the bar where it's free beer, and then have to walk up the steps and talk to us. Grab a beer en route. Yeah, yeah, take away, absolutely. But yeah, we'll get a few words from Scotty Burrell soon, see what he feels about that race. But yeah, great, exciting action. And we are thick and fast here today at Comeback. We do not hang around in between races. And I can already see race three is already starting to prepare themselves on that back straight. And we'll run through those runners nearer the time. But that one goes off at 1.23. So at about five minutes time. Every run. Every brand. For your first or your fastest. every run with ProDirectRunning.com So if you are down at Battersea Park tonight, today, should I say, and you are thirsty, whatever your tipple, coffee, tea, water, 0% beer, lager or pale ale, we've got it all. And luckily our bar's free. So if you do want a pint, or a can, shall I say, head over to where our lovely assistants are in the bucket hats and come and grab yourselves a free beer. All we ask is that you consider donating to our prize pot contribution and 100% of that money goes to our winning athletes in our elite races. But race three is just starting to prepare now and we will run through the start list in a moment. So we'll run through the runners in this race. Number three at the comeback 5,000 from the inside out. In lane one from Hercules Wimbledon, we have Justin Reed. Further along from Marshall, uh, Marshall Milton Keynes, we have Graham Jones. From Victoria Park Harriers, we have Andy Waterman. Home club hero from Belgrave, David Walsh. From Highgate Harriers, the under 20, we have Jack Bailey. From Hercules Wimbledon, Richard Jones. From Paddock Wood AC, we have Charles 
George. From Striders of Croydon, a fan favourite, James Rhodes. From Bexley AC, Thomas Wright. From Watford Joggers, Tom Squires. A Hearn Hill Harrier, a local lad, David Moyes. From Chichester Runners and AC, Comrade Mega. From Hercules Wimbledon AC, Henry Silverstein. From Blackheath and Bromley Harriers, Robert Donahue. Home Club Belgrave Harrier, Sam Village. From Basingstoke, George Morris. Coming a long way from Cornwall AC, Sam Harry. A Highgate Harrier, Brody Denholm. From Holm Pierpont, Luke Myers. From Fulham Running Club, Joseph Holton. And to round off the field, we have Anton Weatherhead. This is race number three in the Comeback 5000. Quiet for the start, please. And we are away in race number three in the Comeback 5000. Let's really get behind these athletes, ladies and gents, inside the stadium. Got a lot of athletes in this race that will be attacking that 16-minute barrier. We have a pacemaker who will be taking it out at 15.55 in the form of John Sanderson. And it will be very interesting to see how a lot of these athletes attack this race for their own goals and PBs. And we'll run through the field as they come around the next time. But in the chat, we've got a lot of support for Joe Holton. He's on the comeback from injury. And we've also got Sam Village in this race, who he's racing this, and then he's running the Summit coffee van. So big up to Sam Village. Didn't want to just come down and serve you teas and coffees and snacks. He also wanted to have a crap round the track, Becca. It's nice, isn't it? Great to see. But this should be a very interesting race. I know a few in this race. We've got Luke Myers. He's one of my own athletes that I coach. This is his track debut, and I'm going to embarrass him now. No, I'm only joking. But it's his track debut, and there's a lot of support for him back home in the form of his fiance Millie. And he is running his first track race as they come through the first 400 in a tick outside 73 seconds, which is very, very strong pacing. What do you think? It's very good. What, uh, I'm interested to know, what was your advice to Luke going into this race? Don't fall over. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I said to him... Um, I said to him to travel the shortest route, so stay on the rail as long as possible. Make passes down the home straight at the back straight rather than overtaking on the bends. Travel the shortest route the whole way and enjoy that first three kilometers. And then once the moves start to take place in that fourth K, make a split decision on whether you're gonna cover those moves or maintain where you're at, depending on the pace that he's running. But he comes into this race, he's got a personal best of 16.11, but he's run that on the roads. But this is his first track race, so it's very easy to say, oh, he'll run sub-16. But this is his first track race, so we've got to take a bit, bit of a pinch of salt. It's a learning curve for him. And I think anything inside 16.30 today for Luke would be a fantastic run. Fantastic run. We've also got Andy Waterman. He's, uh, he's a big social media guy for Tracksmith, if you're one of those uh, Tracksmith wearers. He's, uh, I think he's a social media manager, potentially, for Tracksmith UK. So he's out there running today. Great to see that he's been able to attend and support our event. We've also got James Rhodes, 
big time photographer. If you're a, if you're a fan of the sport uh, at a competitive level, you'll always see James Rhodes there with his camera. And we're, I'm a big fan of James Rhodes. He supports this event every year. Loves his local club athletics, cross country as well. Massive on Twitter. Huge on Twitter, isn't he? Great content on Twitter. Don't need to follow any other page. Just follow James for your athletic stats. As well, a race will finish or a, or a competition will finish, whether it's shot put, pole vault, long jump, results, James Rhodes, straight away. Bang. I love that. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at this race really intensively as they go through the first kilometre in, I believe that's 3.10 on the clock, which is 15.50 pace, so a little bit ahead of schedule, but I don't think many will mind that. A little bit of time banked early on in the first kilometre, but look further back in the field, in and around where James Rhodes is sitting, and those athletes are probably nearer that 16-minute pace, and that might be a sensible tactic, Becca. What do you think? Yeah, you say that. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot up there at the front. Uh, I, they look really strong. Have a few got a little bit carried away, maybe, but it's looking good. They're all looking really strong there. I'm happy where Luke's sitting. You know, with three coming up, four minutes on the clock now. I said to him to sit in the middle of the race, wherever that will be situated for that first three k. Just sit in the middle. Have people in front of you. Have people behind you. It's a safe place in a race. And then once the race starts to to transpire and develop and gaps start opening up, that's when you can start making your decisions. But yeah. at this point in a 5K, you don't need to be doing anything that's going to waste energy. No, you're right. And, you know, sometimes because there's a lot of bodies there, there's a lot of legs moving around, sometimes if you're just having to concentrate on actually not falling over, as you said, it can actually just get a few laps, like, ticked off out the way early on. And before you know it, you're sort of, you know, down to that eight or nine laps to go already. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got a lot of personalities in this race. We've mentioned a few already. We've also got David Walsh from Belgrave Harriers. He ran the Manchester Marathon only a couple of weeks ago. So it'll be interesting to see how his legs are coming back off the back of that. We've got an athlete from Watford Joggers, uh, Tom Squires. He's out there today. Now, great story. He had Lyme's disease and it stopped him running for nearly a year. And now he's back running in the shape of his life and that's a great story and I'm really really proud that he's been able to come to this event today and, and, and send it and I hope he's rewarded with a PB. That is awesome yeah. With, uh, we mentioned Sam Village early obviously he's the founder of Summit Coffee uh, and he's a personal trainer to Formula One drivers and he's on the series Drive to Survive. Is he? Now that is a name I'm going to drop. That is awesome. Get me an autograph. Unreal. Love that. Love that. Uh, we've also got Sam Harry from Cornwall AC. He's a Craig Wimrow athlete. He comes out of the St Mary's University Illuminis uh, stable. And he's out there today for 12 and a half laps. Sam Harry's a physio, I think. I, I believe. think he might be. Yeah. He's, a, he's also got an Italian greyhound puppy Cute. that he regularly brings to the pub, which I love. <laughs> I, enjoy the, I enjoy the pub more when he brings his dog. It's good for morale. It's great for morale for the lads. We love it. But John Sanderson doing his second pace making job of the, of the day. I saw John training the other night down here. He was not hanging about. I was latching on for one lap of his kilometre reps. That says everything you need to know about the shape I'm in. Um, but John was, uh, John's doing a great service for the sport today and a great service for comeback. So thank you very much for your efforts, John. And this race is now starting to split up. I can see Luke making a pass down the back straight. That was a clever move. Remember to do it on the straights. He knows what he's doing. He knows his stuff, doesn't he? Uh, but great running from all these athletes as those moves are starting to take place now. Who do you think's looking uh, strong and confident, Becca? I really couldn't call it. Look at that group. They look great. I actually would love to see them just sit in that little pack there for at least another K and then just see where it goes from there. They're going to get good times if they do that. That's 166. That's the Bexie AC athlete. That's Thomas Wright. He's coming into this with a 16.29 on his car, so he's well inside. He's well inside the uh, PB pace at the moment, as I've just been handed a pale ale from Will Gallimore. You legend, thank you. Oh yeah, by the way, anyone that wants to come and bring me beers, feel free, totally feel free. As I said earlier, the bar is completely free, so go and help yourselves and have a good day at the Athletics. But it's still Thomas Wright, our active leader, in, in behind John Sanderson. He's donning that bright orange Bexley AC vest, you can't miss him. And he's joined for company on the rail inside him. I think that's uh, Henry Silverstein from Wimbledon. He's uh, a 16-10 athlete, so this very, very much suits him. But just take a look at that back straight, Becca. We've now got two groups of athletes and 
Luke Myers is bridging that gap slowly. And I'd say the best bit of advice I could say, if you find yourself in no man's land, bridging a gap to a group in a track race is to use the time you've got. Don't need to do it all in one lap. Use your energy wisely so you can bridge it. And it might be a two or three lap process. And if you can get there smoothly, you'll have a lot more energy for when you need it. But Sam Harry there in the yellow vest of Cormel AC, number 86, just in there, the inside of lane two, making himself known on the shoulder of Thomas Wright. Great to see all the club vests down here tonight. Various club vests from South West London to Cornwall to Cambridge and Coleridge. That's what it's all about. And they'll have six laps left to run in this race. I think all really, really great to see everyone in that. Is it fan zone? Is that what we're going to call it on the home straight? Fan zone? Yeah, we'll call it fan zone. Okay. It's officially fan zone. It's the fan zone now. It's great to see it full. I think we all know it can feel a little bit lonely in a track race. It's a big old track and you're just running laps and laps. So the closer we can get the fans to the runners, the more it's going to help them. So whenever they come past, do not hold back. We've got a uh, Mar Marshall Milton Keynes athlete up the front there. I think that's Graham Jones. He comes into this race with a 1650 on his card. He's got a lot of support in the chat and he is well inside that pace at the moment. And he's on a lovely train of athletes in front of him, just tucked in on the rail behind Sam Harry. But it is our Hercules Wimbledon athlete on the front. I'm just going to get a check on his number. I think it's Henry, uh, Henry Silverstein. I'll just grab his number. Number 143. It is Silverstein. He comes into this race with a 1610. He's one of the fastest in it. And he's just tucked in behind Sanderson. And again, Sam Harry making a pass down the outside of lane one. And this race is really hotting up as they come down the home straight with five laps left to run. Starting to approach that business end of this race, Becca. Yeah, it is, it is the business end, but they're still so bunched up and I really love to see that. We do love a bunch in a race. I can see Ed Goddard has just made his entrance. Great to see Australian marathon Enigma, Ed Goddard enter the arena. He ran a personal best at Manchester Marathon recently. I think he ran a 2.13 and he'll be 2.13 marathon that is. Yep, I'm not uh, mistaken. And he'll be pacing one of our races shortly. So great to see Ed supporting comeback. But back to the front of this race and I think that's the end of John Sanderson's work as he passes off the baton to Silverstein from Wimbledon. And that's almost a bit of a catalyst for this race to get moving. This is where those moves that I spoke about earlier are going to start to take place. And it's still Sil Silverstein out in front. That's number 183 in second. We'll get a check on that. Name check. That That's is Anton Weatherhead from Salisbury. Anton Weatherhead. Yes. He comes into this race. What's his personal best, Becca? He has a PB of 16.25. So this is an awesome run. Yeah, this is great pacing from... from, from uh, from Anton, you know, if he can just maintain a challenge, challenge, challenge Henry Silverstein for the win, maybe he could be rewarded with a personal best. Yeah, really hoping to see Sam Harry stay on those two. They do look like they are pulling away a little bit, though. But come on, you can do it. Sam Harry's now. Remember, we talked about earlier bridging that gap between athletes. Further back in the field, I can see my athlete Luke Myers doing really well. Just needs to keep his head now and and use his energy over these last remaining laps and he's going to be rewarded with a fantastic race. James Rhodes running really strongly too. Just latching on to those fluorescent pink shorts. You can't miss them. But back to the front of this race, it's still Henry Silverstein from Wimbledon with Anton Weatherhead building confidence every metre on his shoulder with Sam Harry starting to bridge that gap in third. Our, our Marshall Milton Keynes athlete Graham Jones is there in fourth, and it really looks like these four are starting to get away. As they round the turn in front of the commentary area, they will have three laps left to run this time. 1,200 metres left to go. Sam Harry just getting onto the back of those two there. That's really good effort. Sam Harry, has got a great trap pedigree. He was an 800 metre, 1,500 metre runner. Previous years gone by, and he may be able to use that closing kick for this, for this final kilometres. So three laps left to run, 12.04 on the clock. It is Silverstein who's leading with Anton Weatherhead from Salisbury on his shoulder. And just as I say that, Weatherhead makes the pass on Silverstein and takes up the lead. Silverstein takes a sit on the rail and Sam Harry is our third place athlete. Could be anyone for the taking right now. 
You could throw a blanket over all three of these and back and forth, Graham Jones battling his own race. Having a great run so far. Our Bexley AC athlete in fifth. That's Thomas Wright. Our early leader is still there. But it looks like these three are well away and gone. And it looks like Weatherhead is not going to leave it to the sprint with 1K left to run. Two and a half laps left for these men. This is where it's going to be won and lost. 12.45 through that mark. As Sam Harry makes the pass into second and gets after Weatherhead. So it's Weatherhead from Harry, from Silverstein into the home straight. They'll have 800 metres left to go this time. As the crowd get behind our athletes, clapping and cheering, that's what it's all about. As I watch a stream of athletes in various club vests in front of me run down the home straight of Battersea Park. This is what we've missed in the UK. This is what it's all about. Purest form of racing. And Anton Weatherhead is living by that mantra as he stretches Sam Harry over the final two laps of this race in the comeback 5000. But it's not over yet, Becca. Down the back straight this penultimate time. It's still Weatherhead from Harry. Silverstein is now clear in third. It looks like it's these two well away and gone for the win. Harry is about five metres adrift of Weatherhead. He just needs to close up and he might get a sniff for the last lap. As they round the turn in front of the commentary gantry. They will enter the home straight for the penultimate time and hear the bell. They'll have one lap left to run in this race as Sam Harry puffs his cheeks out and starts to close up on Weatherhead. And he's starting to build confidence in second place, the Cornwall AC athlete. Let's get behind these athletes, ladies and gents, as they hear the bell. So it's Weatherhead from Harry, 14.40 on the clock. We are looking at around 15.45, 15.50 for this one. Could be massive PBs further back in the field. As Luke Myers goes through the bell in 14.55, he's on for a stormer. But back to the front of this race. Back straight for the last time. Weatherhead is really turning the screw on Sam Harry. He opens the stride. He goes to the arms. 250 left to run in this one. What do we reckon, Becca, with half a lap left to run? He's looking amazing. Based on his PB, I mean, you know, he's been training well, clearly, judged on this performance. What a run from them both. Both so strong. But look at this resurgence from Harry. 150 left to run in this one. Harry pulls out into lane two to make the pass. He comes up level with Weatherhead. It's Weatherhead and Harry with 100 left to run in this one. And away he goes. Harry takes the lead with two metres, three metres, five metres, and away he goes. Sam Harry will take the winning race number three. Powering down to the finish on the clock. 15.50 unofficial for the win for Sam Harry. 15.52 for Weatherhead as Henry Silverstein for Wimbledon comes over the line in just inside 16 minutes. As the rest of the field come down the home straight, Luke Myers is going to be delivered with a PB on his debut track race. 16.07 for Myers there and the rest of the field. James Rhodes also flying down the home straight. Loves a sprint finish, that boy. He's going to be rewarded with a 16, 20 and change as the rest of race number three power down the last home straight at the comeback 5,000. What a last lap that was from Sam Harry Becker. Amazing. So many PBs again, just like that first race. Um, I think, you know, James Weatherhood didn't manage to hang on to that win in the end but I don't think he should be disappointed I think he needs to look at it at Sam Harry being on his shoulder pushed him forward all the way to the line and he was rewarded with that PB I think uh, Sam Harry rolled back the years a little bit there with a 1500 metre closing speed um, that's a PB for him as well though yeah a great running big it's one sub 16 like the way they're moving these guys are shifting that's some real fast runs there and we're just watching the rest of the field Round the final turn and close off race number three of the proceedings here. I get surprised every time we do this, but the excitement levels just exceed my expectations every race. I feel like my head's going to explode with the last lap. Do you know what I mean? 
are we going to have to have a little time out before the elite men's and women's if this is how exciting it's getting already? <laughs> I think I might need to have a lay down. <laughs> I might have to ask someone in the, in, in the stands to come and commentate a race. But yeah, great run in there from Sam Harry. W- rewarded with a great PB um, for the win there. But a huge PB from Weatherhead. Huge. He'd only run 16.25 before today. And he's just run 15.50 and change. Winner's legs. That's what it's about, winner's legs. I think we've got a replay coming up uh, for those watching at home. Yeah, we're going to be we're going to be graced with a sprint finish slow mo re, uh, replay for you viewers at home. Let's call it back. I call it as you see it. So I think this is this uh, coming up to the bell. Yeah, this is coming up to the bell. So what are you yeah. thinking at this point? I thought Weatherhead had it. I didn't think Harry had it in him. I think you know he was hanging on really well, but I didn't. I th- look at that gap. That's a big gap with 400 to go. Yeah, you're right. I think I d- down the back straight, I could see Sam Harry had that twinkle in his eye. I think he got a sniff of it and thought, you know what, I fancy, I fancy this. But it wasn't given. He only made the pass with 120 left to run, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. And, he, and he still had to do the work down the home straight. But fair play to Weatherhood. You know, he, ma- he, he he made his bed. He made his bed and he went for it and he gave it everything and he's yeah. been rewarded. And with as I said, I don't think he should be disheartened whatsoever. I think it's just going to propel him forwards into the rest of his season. And this is where Sam started to get a bit of a sniff, didn't he? 200 left to run. He dug his head down, looked at his looked at his dragonflies and said, come on, lads, give us a bit. And he almost, uh, he had a little boost there. Rounds the commentary box final time. And I think this is when he thought, yeah, I've got this. Sam's a strong runner. Look at them both, you know. I mean, if you did have to put one in a sprint finish, maybe your money would be on Sam. It's very true, very true. But yeah, down this home straight, look at that. He almost looks like a sprinter. It's like, crikey, looks like... Oh, my Lord, he's firing down to home straight. He's got loads <laughs> left in them legs. Yeah, looks brilliant. What a run. What a run from them too. Just had some comments in the chat from uh, famous YouTuber Ben is running. He said, what a finish. Great job on comms, guys. Long way to go. Look after that voice, Lloyd. Don't you worry, Ben. I'm a professional. I've got all my beers to um, lubricate my, uh, my voice box. So don't you worry. But I um, hope you're having a good weekend in Boston as well, mate. Have a good, uh, have a good weekend out there. But uh, did you see that PB from Luke Myers as well? I did. I can't stop thinking about you saying lubricate by my voice box. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Surely you would expect that coming down here. Strange, strange choice of words. What would you have said? Wet my whistle. Oh, stop <laughs> it. You've done this before, haven't you? Wet my whistle. See, I don't have that. I don't have them tickers. Problem is, my brain doesn't think fast enough before my tongue starts speaking. Yeah, the words are coming out of your mouth before before you process them. Yeah. I, I f- know that. Yeah, I feel like I've dug myself a hole in. <laughs> but yeah, great uh, great support in the chat, guys. Um, thank you so much for your questions and, uh, and support for your friends and family. Um, and we will bring you our race winner, Sam Harry, a little interview as soon as possible, as soon as he's uh, done his media obligations with the... With Sky Sports and uh, Flow Track and all of that, and then he'll get himself up here for a little interview. But before then, we're going to bring in a special guest interview. We're going to bring in Australian marathon runner Ed Goddard, who's one of our pacemakers later in the proceedings. If you don't know who Ed Goddard is, where have you been? He's a professional athlete for ASICS. He's a 213 marathon runner. You support Cubs, don't you? You're a big Cubs fan, big football fan, and... I'm very, very excited to have him on here. So we'll grab him and we'll get him on comms in two seconds. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. All right, so I'm welcomed by Ed Goddard in our commentary gantry. So, mate, obviously you are pacemaking one of the races later in the evening. But let's talk about uh, why are you over here, first of all? You've come all the way over the other side of the world. What's brought you to, uh, what's brought you to England, mate? Thanks for having me. I'm um, pretty keen to be here. Uh, what brought me over to England was Manchester Marathon. Um, actually only signed up the week before the race because I'm racing half marathon in Spain next week, which is the main reason, but... I'm here, here for a few months um, in Clapham, so yeah. And uh, obviously I, 
I mentioned it, you ran a 2.13 in, in Manchester. That was a big PB for you on the day. Talk us through the race, how it went for you in your head, and uh, you know what's next, for, what's next for you in this half marathon? Yeah, Manchester was pretty good. Um, I think I learned a lot from it as well. I need to keep a bit more calm. Um, last 5K was a bit grim, cramped up a bit, so I think going into the next races, just um, when you got the chance to relax, just I'm going to make sure I do relax. Um, but yeah, so Spain next week, bit of a tight turnaround, and then Prague Marathon as well, so an even tighter turnaround, so we'll see what happens. And that mark of 2.13, what does that qualify for you for Australia? What does that, what does that qualify you for? Uh, well, hopefully the Com Games. Um, hopefully I can run a bit quicker in a few weeks as well, so that might lock in the spot a bit more. But, um, yeah, so Com Games is the goal. Um, we'll see what else that qualifies for. And you said you're staying in Clapham. Uh, what do you think of this part of the world? Uh, you know, what have you been doing day to day other than running loads and loads of miles? Or Ks. You're a kilometres, man, aren't you? Yeah, definitely kilometres, man. Um, London's awesome, man. Uh, I've been chilling out. There's honestly so much to do. I went to the cricket yesterday at the Oval. I um, was hoping to catch a Chelsea game, but there's not much chance of that happening at the moment. Um, so other than that, just been trying to get off my legs as much, but got a little bucket list of been ticking off things. I'm here with Andy Buchanan as well, another Australian marathoner, so uh, got some company, but yeah, yeah, loving it. Brilliant, mate. Well, it's great to have people like you coming down and support this event. Uh, if you could go home and tell all your friends and family about Comeback 5000, that'd be great. But uh, everyone, ladies and gentlemen in the stadium, Ed Goddard. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. So, ladies and gents, we're going to bring you the start list for race number four in the Comeback 5000. From the inside out, from Winchester and District AC, we have Zach Jepps from Sutton and District, Ben Gillam. Next along the line, we have Aidan Briffett from Belgrave Harriers, home club hero, Tommy Taylor. From Kent AC, we have Dave Morgan from the University of Warwick, Levi Berger. From Queensbury Running Club, Dylan Naylor. From London Heathside, James Waldridge. Tombridge AC athlete, Nathan Chapman. From Victoria Park and Harriers, we have Chris Zenox. From Swindon Harriers, Isaac Mould. Next along, we have Mark Boot. From Hearn Hill Harriers, local lad, George Withers. From Belgrave Harriers, we have Rob Kelly. Stablemate Belgrave Harrier, Ewan Somerville. And to round off this race from Billericay Striders, we have Tate Wallace. This is race number four in the Comeback 5000. Quiet for the start, please. So we are away in this race number four in the Comeback 5000. You and Campbell doing a great job tonight for us as a pacemaker in this one. And these races are going to start hotting up and they're going to be fast and furious. That last race was one in 15.50 and change, so we should be looking at a, a faster mark in this one. And I'm going down my list and most of the athletes in this one, Becca, are all mid-15 runners. Uh, 15.40s or so, so we should be looking for about 15.30 clocking. And what's the pace of going at now? I should know that, shouldn't I? So should I. Mm. <laughs> we'll figure that out as we go. But yeah, this one's already strung out. It's already single file. You and Campbell doing a great job. Great job. So you and Campbell's ta uh, tasked with a 15.20 pace today. 
So he'll be taking this field through in the right splits per 400 and per kilometre. And hopefully these guys that are tucked in behind can be rewarded with a PB. And already 400 metres in, just about 70 seconds on the clock. Very, very, very honest opening pace, that is. But it will settle down nice and nice and easy. That's number 83 at the front there. That's Ben Gillum from Sutton and District. He comes into this race with a 15.29 on his on his card. So no no surprise seeing him right up there, Becca. Yeah, and closely followed by 165 James Woolridge. He's uh, with a 15.26. So that should be a good race between those both. And we got some uh, we got some support in the chat for Gillum actually for Sutton and District. Sutton and District AC. We've got some uh, some people cheering those athletes on, so it's great to see club mates, friends and families in the chat. Well, it looks like there's been a very obvious break very early on. That's uh, definitely a small leading pack. This is a slightly smaller field than the last races um, as we get into those quicker finishing times. Um, so we'll see if they maintain that break, those first four, is it? Yeah, four. Um, but see if that chasing pack will bridge the gap I'm sure I would think they probably will at some point it's, it's a very fast pace this is very very quick um, you know we're going through the first 800 now 223 on the clock that was a 70 opening lap then a 73 so really that second pack have probably probably done the right thing here and just just eased into it very very slightly um, I would not be surprised to see this race bunch up in uh, 1500 meters or 2k or so but we'll have to see how this one pans out So whilst this race is heading on and everyone is watching this one pan out, we are going to bring in uh, another guest for a short interview. We've got uh, one, of the market, one of the marketing directors from uh, TripAdvisor. We have Justin Reed who's going to join me for a quick little chat on you, Justin. Come on, mate. Don't be shy. But back to the front of this race. It's still you and Campbell, our pacemaker, taking these athletes through, hopefully, hopefully for low 1520s so i am welcomed by justin reed firstly how are you mate uh good thanks lloyd yeah good okay nice, not, nice day for it yeah well you know southwest london coming home to to show what it's all about now i did see you on the start list for one of those races but i didn't see you out there mate what's going on no age and new shoe rules means that i think people over 50 it's going to be tough for them to do 12 and a half laps on a track in spikes but um, it's actually great fun just to watch it as well. I think you get more enjoyment out of watching it than we would have done running it on a day like today. Yeah, that's fair enough, mate. And it's, uh, I've got to say, I do love being a spectator rather than being out there. It's too much hard work. A commentator, I think you'll find you are. Ah, oh, I'm just a fan, mate. I'm just a fan. So obviously, you know, you're a big dog at TripAdvisor. Tell us about your role at the company and, and, and what you do on a daily basis. Uh, yeah, I'm the sales director for Europe, Middle East and Africa. And um, basically, we're trying to encourage more and more people to use TripAdvisor. Uh, in whatever shape or form and a lot of people think TripAdvisor about hotels but it's actually about events like today you know discovering what's happening in your local community and you know if we can get this an event like this registered on TripAdvisor so that this becomes a must-see event for people to in Batsy and surrounding areas to come down and, uh, and have a look and enjoy and see what great 5,000 meter running is all about. You took the words right out of my mouth there my friend and obviously you're a very keen runner yourself uh, tell us a little bit about your running journey and uh, you know what it looks for you, what running looks like for you these days. Uh, very, very much. Uh, my running career is in the rearview mirror, I think, Lloyd. But uh, I always enjoy getting out for uh, a run, enjoy getting out for a race, uh, run for Hercules Wimbledon, and we had a great turnout last week in the National 12 stage. Two teams, uh, and again, I think that club running is what it's uh, what it's all about. It is, mate, and we try and we try and mix in the love for club competition as well with a bit of a sprinkle of elite at the end at, at comeback. And uh, we couldn't do it without the support of TripAdvisor. We are very, very grateful for your support uh, on an individual level, but also as a company level. And we cannot wait to work with TripAdvisor in the future. Um, and uh, what are you going to do now? You're going to go and get yourself a beer? Uh, yeah, possibly. I just had an ice cream. Um, just, just enjoy, enjoy watching the athletics and hearing your dulcet tones on the mic. That's what it's about. And is there anyone, in, is anyone you're supporting later on tonight? Anyone that we should look out for? Uh, I think that, that last race is going to be like a real cracker. Um, the elite women's. Uh, the elite women's, I think, is going to be possibly the race of the night. But I'm particularly keen to see what I think Mohammed Mohammed against Phil Sessman in the. Mm. Yes. that race is going to be a real uh, duke. I wouldn't be surprised to see a time under 13.40 tonight as well. I would love to see that. Well, thank you so much for coming down, Justin. I have a great afternoon, and I'll hopefully catch you for a beer later today. Cheers. Thanks a lot. No worries. Carry on the good work. Thanks, mate.
So back to the front of this race after a lovely little interview there from Justin and Ewan Campbell has done his job at the front and he's passed on the baton for this field to now take it on. We have the London Heaside athlete out in front. I think that's James Woolridge, number 165, and lo and behold, it is with uh, Ben Gillam, the Sutton and District AC athlete, in second. That's number 181 in third. That is Tate Wallace from Billericay Striders, who's got a PB of 16.01. So he is on for a huge PB, Becca. 16.01? I said that gap was going to bridge. It's actually just pulled away more and more and more with every lap. Yeah, we got that wrong, didn't we? I did, yeah. It's all right. We get things wrong. It's fine. We're human beings. But look at that breakaway at the front from Heathside, London Heaside athlete. That's, that's Jane Woolridge, James Woolridge. He's, he's run 15.26. And ever since you and Campbell pulled out as pacemaker, he's just said, uh, see you later, lads, and, and pulled away. And he's really taken this race by the, by the horns down the back straight this time. And an athlete in second, that's Tate Wallace from Billericay Striders. I'm really, really intrigued to see how he can manage his effort over this second half. As I say, comes into this race with a 16.01 best. Could be looking at like 40 seconds off his best, potentially. Huge, huge races. Uh, got a lot of group chat going on in the, sorry, a lot of chat in the YouTube live stream going on. We've got uh, people telling me who's pulled out in races to come. We've got support for clubs going on. You name it, it's all going on. As I said, guys, if you want to ask any questions, we will read your questions out on the live stream and answer them as honest as we can. And you can also donate to our prize pot contribution fund directly from the stream. 100% of that money goes to the athletes and the winners of the elite races towards their training camps kit petrol money to get them to train in and support them on their journey of being an elite athlete but back to the front of this race and that gap is really really starting to stretch now Heathside athlete London Heathside athlete James Woolridge has really turned the screw on Bill Ricky's Tate Wallace and Ben Gillam is in third he's just a little bit off the pace of Tate Wallace but he still looks strong and he's still got a bounce in his stride and these four are well away I'd like to get a I'd like to get a number check on the fourth place athlete and just check who that is as they round the turn in front of us in front of the commentary box coming up on nine minutes on the clock now it's still Wallace in second Tate Wallace from Billericay Striders so we've actually got Mark Boot in fourth from Long Eaton Running Club and he's got a PB of 15.51 fantastic so everyone everyone is on for great PBs if they can just maintain this effort um, they haven't made it particularly easy for themselves no they've gone out they've, they've set their stall early uh, they've gone out hard and ultimately when you go out hard you just in it you've, let, you've yeah. made your bed you made your bed you know and I think maybe some i do think some people would be more energized from running it that way that's going to give them more confidence we've just had a question in the chat on the youtube stream he said uh he doesn't have a name it's like a username so i'm just gonna just gonna not read that it says uh, what would you say is a good 1500 meters or 5k time from under 15. before i pass that over to you becca i'm going to say they are very very different events but go on becca what would you say is a good time for under 15. 1500 meters for example gosh um well wouldn't you say first of all towing the start line and giving it a crack and doing your best is yeah. a good time that's yeah. that's the first and foremost thing and not taking it too seriously as an under 15 i think you know just have fun with it for for a girl i think um it'd be very rare that an under 15 would be running a 5k i don't know if that's the same for no, men like, as well i feel that you're right i don't you'd I, probably jump you, up to the three i don't think i ran years. a 5k till i was maybe 20 years old i'd agree yeah but yeah, no, you're right. At that age, at under 15, you know, you're 13, 14 years old. It's, it's all about enjoying the sport, doing it with others, doing it with your mates down the track maybe twice a week or down your local running club on the weekend and just having fun, mate. The more races you finish, you're going to learn every time and you're going to be better, bigger, better and stronger for the next one. That's, that's our advice. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But you're going to learn a lot from watching Comeback 5000 because these ones out here, they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for years. They're not under 15s, that's for sure. And James Wooleridge, the London Heathside athlete, is doing exactly that down the back straight this time. He has now probably put about 50 metres into Billericay's Tate Wallace, who's still having a fantastic run. And Ben Gillam is just being passed there 
by Mark Boot, the long eaten athlete, for third. Yeah, that's going to be a really good battle for third there, I think. That, um, well, do you think first and second are probably set in stone now? I'd say, I'd say Woolridge has got this wrapped up. Yeah. Um, you know, he's coming down now. With 12, coming up to 12. 12 under left to run. Even if he's, even if he fell in, fell into a hole, you know, I feel, I feel he could hang on. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so certain about Tate Wallace just because um, of his PB and the, and the, and the sort of stall that he set of how fast he's gone out. But I really want him to prove me wrong. In yeah. fact, I want him to go and win it. Do you know what I mean? I think he looks really strong though. I, I agree with the PB, but I think if you look at his form right now, he doesn't look like he's made a mistake here. I think he looks great. Absolutely. No, you're so. You're so right, and it's great to see the crowd down the home straight getting behind these athletes. You know, if you are if you are in those stands, sitting in the shade, don't be shy. Get your sun cream on and get out in the sun. Get your tan, get your tan going. And if you pass our bar, our beer is free. And I can see Ross Murray sipping a cold one. What a shock! <laughs> Go on, son. I can see him enjoying the uh, refreshments, which is great. But our bar is free. All we ask is for you to consider a donation to our prize pot contribution, which is split up evenly amongst the elite winners. So Woolridge is looking really strong, Becker, the London Heathside athlete. He's probably put about 80 metres now into Tate Wallace. And further back in the field, I mean, look at that. Mark Boot and, and Ben Gillam have been swallowed by about three or four athletes now. And there's now, what, five, six athletes in the running for third? Yeah, I said it was going to be a battle for third. It's turned into a much greater one with five in that group, closely followed by two. Uh, we'll get some names on who that is now in third. That's, That's number 129. That's Dylan Naylor from Queensby Running Club. He's really made himself known in the last 800 metres. That's Dylan Naylor is now our third place athlete. Looking Closely really followed strong. by uh, Rob Kelly. He's got a PB of 15.56. So he's on for a really good run here as well, is he not? He is indeed, absolutely. Belgrave Harrier. We actually have a little bit of, uh, we have a few facts about uh, Rob Kelly, don't we, Becca? Yes, we, so he's just moved from uh, Dublin to London um, and he, upon moving, joined Belgrave Harriers, the local club here. And um, the first to get the beers out on the team bus back from the 12 stage relays, we're told. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like my sort of guy, my guy. Fantastic. I love to hear those stories. Let's introduce you to Ross Murray. Oh, yeah, I know. Absolutely. That's the sort of fellow he needs to meet. As uh, Woolridge rounds the turn for this penultimate time, uh, I believe he'll come down the home straight and he will hear the bell signifying one lap left to run in race number four of the comeback 5000. So it's Woolridge from London Heathside. He'll hit the bell solo. It's his to win and lose here. And it's still Billericke's. Tate Wallace as he head, enters the home straight for the second last time. 14.08 on the clock for Woolridge. It's looking like a very fast time, that. <laughs> really, really good. What a run from uh, Dylan there. One, two, nine. Really, you know, he took that group and he's spat it back out, to be honest with you. Really pulling away from them now. It looks amazing. I mean, look at the work from the videographer, Danny Home Straight. Look at that. Do you know, I've been, I've been watching him. He's been, he's been getting the mileage in. Yeah, old Max, is a, he's a fit lad. He's a fit lad. He knows what he's doing. Back to the front in this one, ladies and gents. If you are in the stands, get up off your seats and let's support these athletes over this last lap of the circuit. It's Woolridge from London Heatside. 200 metres left to run. He's away and gone in this one. Race number four of Comeback 5000. He grits the teeth and drives the arms in front of the commentary box. 150 left to run. It's still Woolridge. He enters the final turn. Away he goes. 15 minutes on the clock. We could be looking at 15, 20 or change. It's Woolridge from his side. Away he goes, down the home straight. He's going to take the win here. As our Billericay athlete, Tay Wallace, enters the home straight himself. But look at the clock, 15, 17 unofficial. A huge time there. For James Woolridge. And Dylan Naylor entering the home straight this final time as the rest of the field Give it absolutely everything down the home straight. And Tate Wallace is going to be rewarded with a 15.38. 32 seconds off his personal best. And Dylan Naylor is going to come over the line in 15.43, taking about 10 seconds off his best. I mean, PB's all over the gaff today, Becca. All over. That's, um, I mean, that's got to be the most convincing win of the day so far, hasn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. He really just um, set his stall after Ewan Campbell pulled out and off he went. Yeah. 
Ben, ben Gillum, our, our, our early time leader. He's just finished over the line there in 16.04. Solid running from all of these athletes. Great to see, gritting, them te gritting their teeths and giving it everything down the home straight, which is what it's all about, right? Absolutely. So yeah, I can't wait to uh, can't wait to see the slow mo on Woolwich. He must have looked like a dream down the home straight. He was miles clear. He wasn't did. He? I think he looked like he was smiling. Maybe that was a grimace. Yeah, but do he looked do he looked at Toga, isn't yeah. he? He's smiling, <laughs> smiling through the pain as the uh, rest of the field come over the finish line and round off race number four in the comeback five thousand. Great race there, fantastic. It's great to see the stands filling up more and more. And I just want to say, if you if you have just arrived. Um, not everyone knows but it is actually a free bar today but what we are asking for is if you can make any donation to the prize pot for the athletes i'm sure you can agree they deserve it um and yeah that'd be really really appreciated absolutely i echo that becca free beer probably my two favorite words put together to be honest but yeah all we ask is uh, for you to consider a donation to the prize pot fund that we will equally split out split up for the winners of the elite races and I'm actually looking at a replay of Woolridge now coming down the ocean straight look at that absolutely just chilling isn't he just doing a session around Battersea Park really looks fantastic as he comes over the line and don't forget to stop the watch because if it ain't on Strava it don't count right I know and I do you know what I think people give that kind of times timing a race however it can be so so useful to see your lap times and if you don't have someone like a coach or a friend or someone calling out that lap times like it's hard to know like you can get so carried away so i do i massively see the benefit in timing it <laughs> as much as yeah you are right you are yes fair enough everyone everyone's each to their own isn't it totally right i mean you t most of the time you've got i mean we've got a clock at the back uh at the 200 meter start so you can get your get your splits but at the same time um you know when you're in the midst of a race it's difficult to work out what your lap times was so fair enough each their own just had a question on the uh, on the on the live stream we'll come back to that in a second as on the screen we've got our schedule of events so that was race number four coming up uh, next at 16 minutes past two we have race number five that'll be paced at 1440 then at 20 to three we have race number six that'll be paced at 1410 and then to finish off today's proceedings we have our elite men's race at 305 p.m and our elite women's at 3.30 for the finale. Now, in terms of pacing for the elite men's and women's, we've got um, 13.40 pacer going through 3K. It's going to be taking it through 3K at about 8.10, 8.12. That can be Nick Gulab. And then in the women's race, we've actually got two pacers. We've got a pacer at the front, we'll be taking out 15.24 pace. And then we have a mid-pack pacer who will be taking it out in 15.55 pace. Okay, good to know. And who in that men's race do you think will be on the heels of that pacer? Uh, you can't overlook Ben Connor, fastest in the race. He's an Olympian. He's going to want to come and take the money and take the bragging rights. I think Jacob Allen and Dom Nolan, both Londoners, both know this track very well. I think they'll put themselves up there, early doors. As will Alex Perpetra from Highgate. He knows this track well. Uh, and another one to watch out for, outside Dark Horse, is Jeremy Dempsey. He's a four-minute miler, so if it's slow and it comes down to a kick, I think Dempsey will be dangerous. Sam Harry-esque. Yes, Sam Ariesk. Bang on. As the uh, race number five, we just started to prepare on that top bend. As I see a few people basking in the sun, getting those southwest London tan lines. Good to see. If you do need a refreshment, please do head over to our bar where our beers are free. And I've just been presented a lager. Thank you, honey. And a bag of Harry Tang plastics. What a woman. Hashtag athlete. Yeah, we just had a question actually, Becca. I'd be interested to hear your, your verdict on this. Uh, what is your best training session to predict 5K performance? Come back 5,000, surely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, mate, come down and that's do all it. You need. Come back 5,000. That's, that's the, that is the most bespoke session I could advise for a prediction on your 5K performance. Probably. What about Parkrun? Yeah, it's not as good as Comeback, though. It's not. It's, not it's definitely not. They don't have a free bar. <laughs> They don't have a free bar. And they don't have you commentating. So, you know. So we're going to get the start list up for this next race. It goes off in about six minutes' time. We'll run through the runners in this one. And uh, we'll give you a little bit of backstory on them as well. As these races start to hot up. It's going to be very exciting as this afternoon develops. And I can just see our pacer for the next race. Christian von Eitzen getting ready, which is great to see. And we've got that start list on screen for you now. So, 
from the inside out, coming from Belgrave Harriers home club. Unfortunately, he missed the road relays through illness, but he's back fighting fit. It's Callum Stewart. Next along from Harrow AC, we have David Lawrence. From Reading AC, we have James Rennie. From Kingston and Polytechnic, we have Indy Barnes. From Avon Valley Runners, Max Davis. The under 20, Sonny Mound. South London Harrier's own, Tom Higgs. From Ealing South and Middlesex, we have Elias Ahmed. From Southampton AC, Peter Hart. From the Stragglers Running Club, Robert Eveson. From Crawley AC, Kieran Barnes. From Victoria Park Harriers, Adam Milbury. Another Sutton and District AC, the under 20, Adam Hudson. Home club hero from Belgrave, Connell McNally. From St Mary's Richmond AC, under 20, Johnny Brook. Fellow under 20 from Hearts Phoenix AC, Caleb O'Neill. From Shaftesbury Barnet Harriers, the Vet 45, a fan favourite, we have Kojo. Stable mate from Shaftesbury Barnet Harriers, Tom Butler. From Knotts AC, Milan Campion. And rounding off the field from North Devon AC, we have Benjamin DiSalvo. That'll be your race number five in the Comeback 5000. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. So, early predictions, Becca. This race is looking like a very good one on paper. Anyone shouting out at you? Thomas Butler has, if I'm not mistaken, the fastest PB by quite some way. Um, and he ran at comeback last time, which um, I remember it being a really good race, that one. Um, he likes to push it on, but he's been injured. So I, I can see may, this may be why he's dropped down a race. Um, bit of a confidence builder however I think you know if he if he surprises himself and he's fitter than he thinks he could be an early favorite yeah Tom Butler great guy trains out of St Mary's University uh, he's been injured with the Achilles niggle and I know this is his first race back for a little while uh, may have done the road really I was not entirely sure but I'd say yeah, he's been off he's been off the mark with injury for a little while so this is be his first track action and I think this sets up nicely for him. He does come into this race with a PB of 14, 16. So, you know, he's got pedigree there. He's got a bit of muscle memory in those legs. And it'd be interesting to see how he feels 3 or 4K into the race after the pacemaker drops out. But, yeah, Tom Butler's going to be one that, he, I mean, I, I will eat my hat if he doesn't lead this race. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, because he loves to lead. Anyone else for you standing out in this? Uh, yes, I'm going to say we've got Kojo in this race from Shaftesbury and Harriers. Now, he's got a best of 14.05, albeit in 2011, but experience is very important on the track. There's, not, there's no one on this race that's run more laps than Kojo, so trust me. That man can move when he needs to. Has he moved up to the marathon at all? Yeah, mate, he's done it all done it all he's a master of everything he's got every t-shirt every hat he's been there and he's done it and he's a great fan favorite and he's a great great ambassador for the sport and i know that he's been coached by phil kissy a local coach in the area so it'd be interesting to see what shape that he's got him into for today another athlete that's had a really strong winter is Connell mcnally from belgrave he did um he's, he's actually noted here as belgrave's men's cross country MVP he scored the most points across the season for two seasons running and I can vouch for that because he kicked my backside in every single cross country that I did against him so he was always in the Surrey leagues always well up there in those competitive races and it'd be interesting to see how he can translate that form of the margin on the roads to the track today we've also got Tom Higgs South London Harriers runs for my club great fella had a little bit of time out of sport recently but he came back recently for the for the Southern Road Relays ran well there and then he ran a sub 31 in a row 10k in the weekend just gone so he's in shape and you will not find a man alive that will put himself into a bigger hole than Higgsy to get himself a pb and that'll be interesting so they're my they're my top three for today to look out for tom butler Higgsy, and kojo so we're just lining up for this next race race number five and they're coming quick, aren't they? We're nearly done. We'll be going home soon. I feel a bit emotional about it. What about you? 
It really has gone fast. Is that just because we've been so, you know, enthralled with it? Well, I think it's because you're our cat. That'd probably help. What? You've had, you've had, you've had, you've had how many of those now? I'm only, going, I'm only joking, guys. She's only had a couple. She's all right. She's all right. I feel steaming, and I've only had 0%. I don't know what it is. I'm drunk on, I'm drunk on athletics action. That's what it is. They call it endorphins. Oh yeah, is that what it is? Is it? Interesting. We've got a lot of, uh, lot of support in the chat. I think uh, what we got in here. We've got some support for Sunny and Rob. I think they run for Stragglers. Yes, they do. Great name. The, the Stragglers Running Club. Great name. Fantastic. We've also got a lot of support in the chat for Pete Hart as well, which is great to see. So this one will be off in a couple of minutes. Quiet for the start, please. So away in race number five, Christian von Eitzen in the white Pro Direct Pacer singlet on the outside. He'll be taking this race out in 14.40 and already number 182 is already after it. That's Milan Campion from Knott's AC. Do you know what? I've actually raced Milan at a cross country once and he is a fierce racer. He, he will get on the pace no matter what so I'm interested to see how he goes today comes into this race with a 14.46 on his card so great pedigree and already he's already got a gap on Kojo and Milan is away with Christian von Eitzen so be interested to see what they come through the first 400 in lot of support in the chat thanks guys good to see Paul in the chat from South London Harriers we'll be keeping a close eye on this one uh, with, uh, with the Higgsy in it but also um, a lot of support for Pete Hart as well. Great to see. If you want to shout out any of your friends that might be racing today, feel free and we'll read it out on the tunnel. As they come through the first 400, Becca, very, very healthy pace, 67 on the clock. So that's, who is that on, Chris? Ooh, that's inside 14.10 pace, that. That's Milan, uh, Milan Campion from Knott's AC. He's a 14.46 man, followed by Kojo in the white and black singlet, donning the sunglasses. And then in third place, that's number 131, Caleb O'Neill. The under 20 from Hearts Phoenix. So he's a young lad in this one. And he's got a PB of 14.40. So all well on for good time so far. And I'm going to ask the question I always ask you about two laps in. Who's looking strong, Becca? <laughs> <laughs> Hardest question to answer. Um, I mean, Chris Van Eysen's looking strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course he is, yeah. We'll see how he is in a few laps. You'd hope so, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would like to think so. But these, these first That's three, away yeah, bad, that, is a, that is a bit of an early lead. I wonder, um, was it Caleb, the under-20? Um, he's an under, yeah, younger. Younger athlete, yeah. He's, he's obviously got pedigree, though. You know, he's 14-40 at his age. He's very, very strong. Hearts Phoenix got a great history of... Of, of solid distance runners I've run against many many times and just go through the 800 mark there in 2.18 uh, so you know well inside 14.35 pace you know 70 a lap is 14.35 and I can see Higgsy rocking and rolling with that really unique style in the white singlet with the maroon strip down the chest for South London Harriers I'm very excited to see him get stuck into this race the Elian and Middlesex athlete there that's uh, Elias Ahmed I saw him doing some strides the other night down here looked unbelievable I'll tell you that complete contrast contrast to what I was looking like and just as we said those three had a break they've closed it back up again and it it's could classic. be any man's race <laughs> I think they hear us and then they're just like you know what we're gonna do the exact opposite of what you said tell you what we're gonna bring another interviewer in we're gonna bring another special guest um, we've taken him off uh, the the hills of Geordie Shore and Love Island it is 2012 Olympian Ross Murray the crowd goes wild Woo! Come on in, Ross.
So, Ross Murray, how are we? Not too bad, enjoying this nice, sunny, glorious weather. Okay, and what's the uh, what's the day treated you like so far before you came to come back? What have you been up to? A uh, little 15-minute run, really getting the miles in today, uh, stretching, stretching the body. 15 minutes, a, a very tedious weekly shop, and that's about it, mate. So this is literally the highlight of my day. And did you come down with anyone today? I did. Came round with my beautiful fiance, but I have to say that, don't I? Shout out, Kelly. Where is Kelly? Is she at the bar or is she just taking a seat or she, what's she up to? Don't know, actually. She walked off with a fella. I don't know where she's gone. <laughs> she's gone pear tree, mate. She's long gone. And, uh, you know, what have you been up to the rest of the week? You've been working hard. I know you're, you're a city worker now, aren't you, for TripAdvisor. What does your day-to-day work look like? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, I'm from home a lot of the time in one day a week, which is great. So, you know, sitting at the computer, a little run on my lunch if I can. I sound really boring, don't I? There's nothing nothing much else to add to it than that. Well, you know, your life's a lot different now. You're not, on a, you know, you're not competing in the Olympics. And Well, don't don't write me off just yet, mate. <laughs> well, I hope to see you at comeback one day. Is that in the pipeline? Yeah, of course it is. Always is. I always tell people it's not, but I'm definitely going to get back one time. I've got my eye on Paris, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, it was a Paris marathon, yeah? No, no, I just mean I'm going to Paris for the weekend soon, so. <laughs> got our price deal. This is bantering it on it. Yeah. This, this is a good Friday. This is quality, isn't it? God, it's better than the cricket, this. Becca's not going to get a chance to come back. But have a look at the race, Ross. Obviously, with your experience of the Olympics, who, you know, we are about five minutes in. Who would you say is looking dangerous, maybe a shout for the win? Well, Lloyd, that's a very good question, and I haven't seen the start list, and from where I'm sitting here, I don't know who's in the race exactly. Throw, throw a coloured vest out there, I'll give you a hand, mate. I'll, I'll carry you. I reckon the lad at the front looks like he's doing really well. The, guys, pace, the, the, guys, the guys at the front, nah, I'm joking. As they come round, I'll be able to give you more, more in-depth analysis. Uh, but obviously, Christian Von Eyten, the beautiful Orlando Bloom, is pacemaking today, or is he racing? He's pacemaking. I, be- I did call that, I did call that, I knew that. He is a beautiful man. He is a very, very good-looking human being. Uh, also, a very good pacemaker, which is useful. How many more laps has he got to go? Because we might have to uh, reserve judgment just yet. I think when they come around this time, they'll have seven left to run. Um, as they come down the back straight, we'll just get a split on the clock as they round the turn. 15, uh, 5.50 on I mean, the clock. i tell you who I am rooting for is Kojo, the brilliant Kojo. Aren't we all? What a legend of the game. Absolute hey. hero. Got a lot of time for Kojo. But that was 5.50 on the clock. Um, that's a great split there for these lads at the front. And uh, I think the pace was set for 14.40, I believe. Um, and these athletes are well on for that with the lad at the back there. Just to, uh, That's Tom Higgs from South London Harriers. I was going to say that, yeah. He's, uh, he's coming back to form with a strong 10K recently. But uh, yeah, appreciate you joining me in the commentary. Ah, that's box, all right. I mean, I mean, sorry, I wasn't much more. I uh, wasn't of any value for race commentary, but I'm sorry. happy to happy to be here. We can't all do it, mate. It's no, you right. can't. No, absolutely but, not. Uh, go and enjoy your afternoon, mate, and I'll catch you later for a quick one. Ca- can I stay? No, I'm joking. I'm going to go. No, get out. See you later. See you later, mate. So back to the front of this one, and that is a Southampton vest. I'm going to put myself out on a whim and say that is a Southampton vest out in front. That potentially could be number 99. Uh, no, not sorry, not 99. We will get the right number in a sec. But the leading athlete was right on the heels of Chris Van Eitzen has really broke away from this leading group and laid down his intent. That is number 87. That is Peter Hart from Southampton AC with a PB in this. Event of 14.51, he's well on for improving that mark today. And when Chris Van Eitzen passes over the responsibility, he will be out in front alone. And further back in the field, we've still got Milan, Campion from Knotts AC, Kojo still in there, Tom Higgs, Higgsy on the back. And the under 20 from Hearts Phoenix, Caleb O'Neill, all in there, along with the Elin Southall. Our Middlesex athlete, Elias Ahmed. So, real strong group of athletes chasing our active leader, Peter Hart. And this is teeing up to be a really, really competitive last two kilometres in race number five of the Comeback 5000 as we just tick over eight minutes on the clock. And I fear that Chris and I said will maybe do another lap or so and then that'll be, that, that'll be his work done for the day. And it'll be all down to Hart and his heart on whether he can maintain this pace for a PB. As they round the turn in front of the commentary gantry, Chris Van Eysen doing a great job, just having a little look inside him. 
Peter Hart still looking strong in his gate. Kojo now starting to make a break away from that chasing group with Milan Campion in third. Our Hearts Phoenix athlete Caleb O'Neill in fourth. Elias Armoured still there in fifth and Higgsy on the on the back in sixth. Them, them, them athletes single file as Chris Von Eitzen does his job and pulls out with five laps left to run. So it's Peter Hart out in front. He's probably got about 50 metres or so on the chasing pack. Led by Kojo and Milan Campion. This race really hotting up, Becca. Yeah, we're getting loads of support for Pete on the live stream. Um, yeah, really great running from him. Yeah, we've got a lot of support from Milan as well from the uh, the chat in the on the YouTube stream. But dare I say it, since Christian Alex and the placemakers dropped out and Peter Hart has had responsibility at the front, I'd say that that gap's not getting any smaller. But Kojo and Milan now are starting to break away from the under 20 from Hearts Phoenix, Caleb O'Neill. And those two are starting to get on the hunt for Peter Hart. But at this point, he looks strong, I feel. It doesn't look like anyone's going to break him at this point, but we'll see how that goes. It's going to be a really interesting final few laps. He's going to come down this time. He'll have a mile left to run. Four laps on the, on the board. If you are in the stadium, if you are in the stands, get up off your seats and get up on that hurdle. We want you in amongst the action, cheering on these athletes. And whilst you pass the bar, grab yourselves a free beer while you're at it. But out in front is still Peter Hart from Southampton AC. Comes into this race with a 14.51 best on his card and he is going to look to lower that today. Yeah, it was really neck and neck between uh, Kojo and uh, Campion, but it does look like Kojo's pulling away now. Is that going to be the end of that rivalry or can he pull it back? I fear that if Kojo's putting the hammer down, he'll be doing it for a good reason. There's a lot of experience in those legs. He knows what he's doing. He's been round, he's been round the circuit enough times to know how to gauge his effort, and I would not count that man out for the win here. Interesting fact about Kojo. He was the first man to go sub-30 at Highgate night of 10 KPBs. He's been there and done it. Can he do it down at comeback? But into the home straight this time, it's still Peter Hart, the Southampton AC athlete. He'll have 1,200 metres left to run this time. Three laps of the circuit to go. Kojo in second. Milan, Milan Campion still there for not AC in third. Higgsy making the pass for fourth. He's on for a great run as he rounds the turn in front of under-20 athlete Caleb O'Neill. And we are into the final few minutes of race number five at the comeback 5,000. As we tick over 11.20 on the clock. So if you had to make your money now, you had to make your bet, Becca. Who's your, who's your winner of this one? Set your stall. It's got to be Pete, hasn't it? I'm asking you. I don't know. You tell me. You My tell money's me. on Pete. Okay. What, what makes you say that? <laughs> do, you, do you not back Kojo? Come on, Becca. <laughs> do you know, it might be that 50 metre lead he's got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does help, doesn't it? It does help in running races, doesn't it? No, you're right. It does. He does look strong. He's now got a kilometre left to run. Two and a half laps, 11.48 on the clock. Kojo goes through the 4K mark in 11.53. Closely followed a couple of strides back by Milan Campion. Yeah, he's not letting that gap go. I'm impressed. He's I told really, you, really, really good. I told you he's a fierce racer. He will give his absolute all. Yeah. 800 metres left to run this time for Peter Hart. I feel like that gap is just starting to close slightly. Maybe 45 metres back to Kojo, but that is still far enough to be in control and it's Peter Hart through the lap marker 12.21 on the clock two laps left to run could be looking at a mid 14.30 performance here which would be a personal best for the Southampton athlete and looking back further in the field Milan Campion making a pass on Kojo for second the young Knotts AC athlete really attacking this lap yeah, he's looking really, really strong. What a race for him. Absolutely. The Knotts AC athlete striding down the back straight this penultimate time. He's put in a few yards into Kojo and he might be wrapping up second place in this race at the comeback 5,000. But back out the front is still Peter Hart as he rounds the turn in front of the commentary box for the second last time. But oh my, Milan Campion is on the hunt for Knotts AC. And he is after Peter Hart. And this is going to be a very interesting last 500 metres, ladies and gents. Let's get behind these athletes as they hear the bell this time. 
Peter Hart out in front. He's going to have one lap left to run. We'll get it on the clock. Has he gone too early? One way to find out, Becker. 13.34 on the watch. 400 metres left to run for Peter Hart. Milan Campion follows suit. On goes Kojo for third. As Thomas Higgs comes down the home straight for the Panama time for South London Harriers. But on the back straight for the final time, it is Peter Hart for Southampton. He's flying down there and it looks like it's his race to win and lose. Look at that battle for second, Becker. Kojo starting to rally again. Yeah, so close between those two, really. There's nothing between them. It's just who's got it on the day. But this is where 5,000 metre racing comes into his own. 150 left to run for Peter Hart. He grits his teeth. He drives the arms. Ladies and gents, I want you to go mental for Peter Hart as he enters the home straight for the final time. He will take the win in race number five at the comeback 5,000. Watch the clock. It's going to be a huge run. It's going to be a PB. 14.41 unofficially for Peter Hart. That is a personal best. Milan Campion coming over the line in 14.48. And Kojo for third in 14.50. As Higgsy rounds the final turn. But he is challenged by the Reading AC athlete, James Rennie. And it's Rennie that's going to come over the top of Higgs for fourth. Higgs for fifth. And O'Neill from Hearts Felix, Phoenix for sixth, as the rest of the field fight their way down the home straight. Great racing from these guys. One of our early runners who was up there from Ealing, Southall Middlesex, Elias Ahmed, flying down the home straight. Just coming over the finishing line now in 15.28. Great racing there from this entire race. As Once again, loads of PB smashed there. Peter Hart, yes. Um, Kojo, yes. 10 second PB there, I think. See, it's, it's his fastest for, for many years. For many that's, years, that's, yeah. that's for certain. Uh, Milan was just outside his, but bang on the money of a PB. So, yeah, fantastic running from all of these guys. And even the athletes that are flying down the home straight now, they've all got their own personal goals and PBs to beat. And no doubt, Comeback's given them an opportunity to send it and go home happy as Conor McNally just comes over the line there for Belgrave. Great running from him. Big up the cross-country MVP for Belgrave, but another race down. Fantastic, great to see. And we have another slow motion replay coming up for you now. Absolutely, looking on the stream there, this final 200 meters. And this is uh, Peter Hart. I mean, this is your highlight reel, mate. I'd be, I'd be playing this at my wedding if I was you. Look at the form on the boy as he rounded the final turn. He, again, driving the arms, driving the knees as high as possible. And it's always looking like a 400 meter sprinter in that final final turn. I'm, I'm almost glad that he didn't have anyone on his shoulder because I think he would have obliterated him looking at that form. Do you know what I mean? Look at that, driving the whole way to the line. Those last five meters are arguably the hardest, but rewarded with a new PV. It's what it's all about. Milan Campion there, he's even dipping at the line to get every ounce out of that clock to try and lower that PB. Love it, that's what it's all about, club racing at its finest. But yeah, great comment in the chat there, it was a fast start, Pacer did go out very, very quickly and um, yeah, those lads were really able to sort of manage that transition um, once the Pacer did pull out and, and we were rewarded with some fast times at the front of the race and it'd be great to hear from from Peter Hart when we get a chance once he's once he's done his podium but uh, Steve Gardner's on the case he's off to go and find a great work from, from Steve thanks mate but yeah Peter Hart great win there and on your way up to the commentary box grab yourself a free beer and come and have a chat and we will get ready for race number six Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com.
Okay, so just a couple of minutes before uh, race six gets underway. Um, this one, do you want to take this, Lloyd? All oh, right then. Okay, so race number six, as Becca says, this race is going to be fire, and I'm going to run you through the runners and riders in this one. We're going to be having a pacemaker uh, in the form of Ed Goddard, who we spoke to earlier on the comms. I can just see him there limbering up. Uh, but I'll run you through the runners. So from the inside out, this is where it starts to get really exciting, ladies and gents. In lane one, from Belgrave Harriers, hometown hero, we have Sam Gabriselassi. Next along the line, we have Oscar Bell from Aldershot Farnham District. Alex Poynton from Knott's AC. Stuart Spencer from Worthington District Harriers. Jack Woods, the Newman Essex Beagle athlete. Frank O'Brien. From Dulwich Runners AC, Edward Chuck. From Beds and County AC, Harry Brody. From Southampton, Ricky James. The under 20, Daffy Jones. From Newcastle Staffs AC, Elliot Smith. Another Southampton AC athlete, Aidan Lennon. The Hearn Hill area, the local lad, Lewis Lally. From Tombridge AC, Miles Weatherseed. Marshall Milton Keynes AC athlete, James Tuttle. From Chesterfield and District AC, Alex Edeker. From Gainsborough and Morton Striders, Jordan Skelly. From Thames Valley Harriers, Chris Thomas. And rounding off the field, the Newman Essex Beagle athlete, Charlie Brisley. This will be race number six in the Comeback 5000. Quiet for the start, please. So if anyone was a little bit confused watching from home or in the stadium, uh, we mentioned Tom Butler at the start of that last race and um, I think he may have missed the start, so he's actually in this race. Uh, so this really will test his fitness as we were attesting to. If there was ever a more Tom Butler story, that would be it. So, yeah, hopefully he's been training well and hopefully he can latch onto this pace. It's going to be paced at 14.10 for the viewers watching. That is 68 a lap, so we'll be able to give you an idea of the pace throughout the race from Ed Goddard. But someone as experienced as Goddard, he's a sub-14 man himself. He's been there, he's done it, he can run 68 with his eyes closed. So he'll probably be able to take it at least 3k, maybe a little bit further. But we're going uh, to we're gonna, gonna have some quiet now, just let the, uh, the officials line the athletes up, make sure their shoelaces are tied up. No one's wearing any illegal shoes. And then, uh, then we'll be ready. So. Last call for those in the stands, if you could please get up off your feet and come into the viewing area for this race. The action is starting to hot up. We'd love to have you. Don't be shy. So away in race number six. This is the fastest of the open races. Ed Goddard's taking it out in 14.10 pace. And already I can see Sam Gabriselassi has taken up the lead on the inside with Alex Edeker in the streamline of Goddard. And I am very, very, very excited to see some of these athletes attack that 14-minute barrier. We've got a lot of fan favourites in this race, and if you are watching the stream on YouTube, please do fire through your, your comments of support for your friends in this one. We have Sam Gabriselassi who's taking up the lead just in behind Ed Goddard. He is a Belgrave Harrier, and what a story he has. We'll get that one out of the way early because it's one of the most 
beautiful running stories out there. He's only been running since 2020. And that year, he ran a 19 minute, 10 second park run. He then finished a year later with a PB of 16.54. And a year after that, he came down to come back and he ran 14.29. He's now a 14 minute, 19 man. And he comes into this race as the quickest in it. As they go through there, bang on the money, 68 seconds for Ed Goddard, 69, 68 and change for the rest of the field as expected. Yeah, we've also had a shout out for Alex Edica on the YouTube uh, comments. And uh, he comes in with some really good pedigree. He came eighth at, in Bucks XC um, and then from that went on to the World Uni Games and came 17th. 17th in the world, pretty good. Not bad at all, is it? Yeah, he, he came down here as well and did, um, he did the 5K on the road around the park, around 14.25. And I know that a lot of the lads and, 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 and girls in St, at St Mary's that are out in Font Remote at the moment, they'll be, uh, they'll be watching this. I don't know what the time is in Font, but what's the time now? Um, won't be at the sports bar yet, would you? You'd probably just be mingling around in your in your apartment waiting for your second run wouldn't you <laughs> having a having an almond croissant having a cafe au lait <laughs> something like that but yeah all of the one all the athletes out in front will be watching Edica today with a with a fine tooth comb as long with Char as long as long as um, as well as Charlie Brisley as well he's another athlete from St Mary's University and Brisley's had a great winter I've been watching him with a with a very very fine eye I think he's a fantastic runner he's run 14 16 at best um, and he was fourth at the Battersea Five Miler in the winter, and he ran, he ran very, very fast. He actually, he actually beat Sam Gabrielassi that day, and he is one to watch in this. He's in the Newham and Essex Beagles vest, which is the, which is the gold singlet, and he's just in behind Tom Butler, who's donning the white and blue of St Mary's. But really interesting battle today, I think, between Edica and Brisley. But up the front, it's still Ed Goddard doing a fantastic job. And they will come through the K mark this time. We work, we do want in and around 250. And I think we're just a couple of seconds down on that. It's about 252. But for athletes of this calibre, Becca, you can bring that back in the last lap, can't you? Yeah, I think it was the same at the 800 mark, maybe two seconds off. But, you know, that could actually do them some favours in further down the line in this race. You really couldn't call this race at the minute. Strung out, perfect, you know, on the rail, exactly where you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. We've also got um, in se act active second. We've got Alex Pointer, and he's wearing the Older Shop Farnham District vest, same club as you, Becca. And Big up. He, he's had a fantastic winter. Very, very consistent in the cross country and road races. And I fear, I feel like this could be a breakthrough race for him. This is the sort of race he needs. Do you know what I mean? That good field around him, good conditions, pacemaker set up for a real quick one. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him go in and around at fourteen ten today. Yeah, I think it looks like Sam's going to be on the back of Ed Goddard no matter what. And I think Alex Pointer just really, Pointer, sorry, needs to just really close any gap that might start to open. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when you're running these speeds, 14 minutes and change, the, 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 the split second decisions when a move is made and you decide whether to cover it or not are so important. So, so important. It's so true, and as much as it's a 5k race, you think you've got time. A gap can open up without even realising it, and before you know it, it's, it's, it's gone and you, it's too hard to close down. The difference between running 68 a lap and then having to run a 66 to close a gap is, is from experience, painful. So these guys, you know, they're going to, as you can see, shortest, shortest route round, no need to run 410 metres a lap. They're going to be bang on the rail, in behind Goddard. And, Goddard's a beautiful run out of watch, isn't he? He's, he's, he's like Prefontaine out the front there. He looks absolutely majestic. And Sam Gabriel Selassie, he's got the best seat in the house, taking a seat, get, taking a sit on the rail, as I like to say. So it's Gabriel Selassie from Belgrave, Alex Pointon from Older Shop, Fardham District in second. We have our under 20 athlete, that's Duffy Jones in third, number 164, coming through for fourth from Worthing, that's Jack Woods. He comes into, it, uh, into this race with a 14.26 on his card, so he's looking to lower that today. And he's wearing the green vest of Worthing. As they come through the finish line there with, I believe that says eight laps left to run. Five minutes, ten on the clock. And it's still Goddard out in front. And Sam Gabriselassie, who hasn't moved from that lead yet. And it'll be interesting to see whether he gets any help. But it's starting to string out now. Little gap just in behind the Worthing athlete of Jack Woods. Back to Alex Edeker. And then a similar gap back to Charlie Brisley. But these athletes of this pedigree and what they've got in their locker, they know what they're doing and they can gauge their effort to run along their own strengths. But there's the 2K mark. 
So that's a really pinnacle point of this race, about 5.45 there. So only slightly down on the pace, nothing too drastic. These types of athletes can bring that back inside 600 metres to go. And it's still Goddard out in front. Gabriel Selassie tucked in on the rail with pointing on his shoulder. And the young under 20 of Jones in third. Great to see you lot are coming out of the stands to join the action in the viewing area. Please do get behind these athletes with seven laps left to run. Once again, for any uh, new arrivals to the stands, uh, the bar is free. Uh, but we would love you to please consider donating to the prize fund for the elite athletes from today. Um, yeah, if you can do it, it'd be great. There you go, saleswoman at heart, aren't you? But this race is hotting up at the front. Goddard getting a lot of love in the chat for his luscious locks. The I'd Aussie be, locks. I'd be interested to know his hair care routine. We'll chat to him a bit later. But Gabriel Selassie still there with pointing, just taking a sit in second with Jones in third and our worthy athlete Jack Woods back in fourth and Alex Edeker's getting getting a lot of support in the chat but also being told to close the gap and it looks like he's listening to you Tom he is closing that gap but he's doing it in a way that's just managing his energy correctly he's taking his time but I think he's going to be I think he's going to be looking good in the closing stages of this race yeah, it looks like Sam may just be breaking away a little bit for those other two. And I think Alex and uh, the athlete in third at the minute really just need to work together, close that. Absolutely. We've got a lot of love for Frank O'Brien in, uh, in the chat. He's East Cork and Ireland, but also running for Newham and Essex Beagles. He's getting a lot of uh, good lucks in, in the group chat, uh, sorry, in the in live stream for, uh, on YouTube. Group chat, I think it's WhatsApp. <laughs> But back to the front of this race and Gabriel Selassie has set his stall. I heard he was in good shape coming into this. And I, I, know, I know he wanted to be in that A race, but he's had to settle for the B race tonight. But he's going to set a time. He's going he's gonna to want to finish this race and say, not only did I have a great experience, but I want to be in that A race next time. And look at, he's just doing that in behind Goddard. Can you remember what time he ran last year? 14.29. Beep, 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 beep. That's just geek coming out of me. Yeah, he ran 14.29 uh, and he's, he's lowered his PB to 14.19, which is, which is a very, very fast mark. But Gabriel Selassie heads down the straightaway now through the finishing area. Five laps left to run. That's 2K of running. 8.35 or 8.34 for Gabriel Selassie there. Guys. Just a little bit down on the pace, very slightly by three or four seconds, but he can bring this back. And I feel that Goddard's going to really help him in this last 2K. If I, if I had to predict, I, I, can see, I can see Goddard doing as much as he can here. He'll go as far as he can. I know that he, he's, he's a good guy, Ed. He'll do absolutely everything. I was thinking the exact same. I think he's, yeah. When, when you know you've got one guy behind you as well, it makes it even more worthwhile to really hang on in, in there as much as they can. We've just had a comment in the, in, the, in the live stream that Ed Goddard is head and shoulders above the rest. Got a lot of time for that. Great banter. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've just gone through 3,200 for the question in the in the live stream of how far they're into the race. And it's still Gabriel Selassie out in front, tucked in behind the pacer of Goddard. 9.25 on the clock. And when they come round this time, they'll have a mile left to go. Four laps of running left in this one. And a great battle for second with Alex Poynton and Daffy Jones, the under 20. Both on for great PBs if they can hold it together. Further back and forth is Alex Edeker, but he's got company with a worthy athlete of Jack Woods. And the rest of the field are starting to bunch in behind Edeker. So he could have company for this last mile. But Gabriel Selassie is really out and gone now. He's stretched about a 40 or 50 metre gap back to Jones and Poynton. And he is just eyes set on the back of Goddard's head, isn't he? I mean, what a, what a lovely set of hair to watch, I guess. But good source of nowhere. motivation <laughs> he's just got his eyes dead set into the back of Goddard oh, I love seeing I love seeing runners in full flight it's a beautiful a beautiful beautiful picture both absolutely cruising well they probably don't feel like they're cruising they probably feel like they're going all out sprinting to be honest but they look amazing boys you do look amazing boys and, and Sam Gabriel looks fantastic as he enters the home straight and the Belgrave crowd get behind him. He will have a lot of mates in the stadium today with him being a Belgrave Harrier. 
Jones has started to make a bit of a gap on Poynton with 1,200 metres left to run. Maybe the first three places are wrapped up, but Alex Edeker, Jack Woods and the rest of this field, including Tom Butler, might have something to say about that. As now Ed Goddard passes the baton on to Gabriel Selassie and away he goes. He's now by himself out in front. Probably got about 60 or 70 metres on the rest of the field. And this is really a class of his own. And he is laying down the law down at the Battersea Park Millennial Arena. And I can't wait to see what this clock's going to say at the end. So it's still Gabra Selassie, 1K left to run, 4K into the race, 11.30 on the clock. Great splits there from Gabra Selassie. As Jones and Poynton battle down the back straight, I can see moves being made further back in the race with Edeka and Woods. And Tom Butler's doing really well as well, considering that he's gone up a race for today. But it's still Sam Gabra Selassie out in front. He will have 800 metres left to run this time. Massive support for the hometown hero here. Yeah, it's amazing to see everyone in the stands getting up, getting on their feet for, the, for these guys. This is where it's going to hurt for them, so let's all get on our feet and get as loud as we can. 12.08 on the clock for Gabriel Selassie. You could be looking in and around 14.15. We could be, out, could be on for a PB for the man out in front as Jones goes through with two laps left to run, followed suit by Poynton of Aldershot Farnham District. But Gabriel Selassie is away and gone down the back straight this penultimate time. I've said it before today, ladies and gents, but these athletes really need your support now more than ever as they enter their final section of this 5K, race number six of the Comeback 5000. It's Gebra Selassie, 600 metres left to run. Approaching 13 minutes on the clock. Gebra Selesi, an absolute beautiful motion. Look at the stride on the man. This is a man that trains six, seven times a week. He does everything he can in the sport to improve as much as he can in the sport. And today, he's proving his fitness in great array as he enters the last lap. One lap left to run for Gebra Selesi. 13.21 on the clock. Sam, you can always find a bit more. Everything He's going to have to pull out a big last lap of 57 seconds to hit PB. But he's done it in style. Once again, an amazing race on for second place here. I think they just went through the bell in just under 1330. Uh, and you, you couldn't call it. I think um, there's been some back and forth between them both. So this is going to be on for a really big finish here. Moves being made further back in the field. Alex Poynton has just turned on the afterburners on Jones with 300 metres left to run. 2.50 now for Poynton and he's really started turning the screw on Jones. But at the front of the field, I think this one's wrapped up. It's Gabra Selassie with 1.50 left to run. The Belgrave Harrier, let's get behind him, ladies and gents. He's into the final turn. One more Come straight on, to Sam. run. Sam's away and gone in this one. He's going to take the win in race number six. But look at the burners from Alex Poynton. He's flying down the home straight. But I think Gabra Selassie will hold on for the win. Watch the clock. Just outside 14.30 for Gabra Selassie from gun to tape. Alex Poynton for second with 14.36. Jones will hang on for third, the young under 20. Just outside 14.40 as the rest of the field fly down the home straight. I can see Alex Edeka there in a great battle. Tom Butler flying over the finish line with his trademark dip. Great to see. What a race that was, Becca. <laughs> Amazing. So good from Sam. So, so much confidence from gun to tape. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. Absolutely. I think he'd be very proud of that performance to lead gun to tape at his home track for his home club wearing his club vest, which is always good to see. Wow. Rest of the field coming down the home straight now see if it's St Mary's vest in front of me that's number 132 that's Frank O'Brien from Newman Essex Beagles round in the final turn chasing his own goals and his own PB as well and he will finish off race number six in the comeback 5000 
So that rounds off the open races of today's proceedings, ladies and gents. I hope you've enjoyed the club action, but that does mean one thing. It is now time for the elites. At five past three, in about eight minutes time, we will have the elite men's race. And then our finale event, we will have the women's race at 3.30. So a few more minutes, we may get an interview with Sam Gravisalassi before then, but men's elite race to follow. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the stands, if you're in Battersea Park, or you're watching at home, we now have the elite men's race who are now preparing for 12 and a half laps of action down at the Millennial Arena. Now I've said it a few times tonight, or today already, especially to you in the stadium. I'm gonna ask you one more time. If you are sat in those stands, look up at the top bend, and you will see me waving at you. Get up off your feet, get onto the track, Let's get amongst this action and support these athletes in their quest to win a whole lot of money tonight. £1,000 will be going to the winner, plus whatever money we all create on the prize pot donation. So if you are sitting down, come forward and get amongst it as we introduce the elite men. This is the moment we've been waiting a whole year for. The Comeback 5000 is bigger and better than ever and we're gonna introduce your elite men for you now. From the inside out, from Highgate Harriers, Alexander Le Petra. From Bedford and County AC, Ben Alcock. 
from Tombridge AC, San Francisco alumni, Alex Howard. From Southampton AC, the national cross country champion. He was here last year and came fifth inside 14 minutes. Mohammed, Mohammed. Coming into this race with a 14.03 personal best from the city of Sheffield, Lewis Jagger. From Notts AC, Freddie Hessian. Coming fresh off the back of a Tokyo Olympics for the marathon, the fastest in the field with a PB of 13.19, Ben Connor. A rising star from Wales, ran 7.54 for 3,000 metres indoors. Ocean Perrin. A four minute miler in his own right, running out of Shaftesbury Barnet Harriers, Jeremy Dempsey. Our second San Francisco alumni with a PB of 13 minutes 43. He's a big fan favourite from Highgate, it's Jacob Allen. He's the reigning 10,000 metre England champion. He's a Croydon Harrier, Dominic Nolan. Had a massive breakthrough year last year, setting PBs all over the track. Running out of Huron Harriers, Cam Allen. Our third San Francisco Uni alumni had a breakthrough run recently with a 14-13. Running from Bracknell AC, Scott Halstead. The second brother from the Mohammed stable, absolute flyer of a winter, coming second at the Inter Counties Cross Country, second at the Bucks Cross Country. Can he take the win tonight? Zach Mohammed. Coming into this race with a PB of 13.55, out of Benton County, Dan. Jarvis with a PB of 14.17 running out of Hercules Wimbledon, Jonathan Cornish. That is your men's elite race paced by Nick Gulab. Quiet for the start please. And we are away, first time of asking in the men's elite race at the comeback 5000. Don't know about you ladies and gents, but I've been waiting all year for this one. And Ed Goddard is back at the front, helping out pace once again. Joined by Nick Gulab. And I could talk about all of the athletes in this race for entire race, but any one of these could win this. And I'm sure any one of them will want to with over 1,000 pounds up to grabs, up for grabs. Just to give you a little bit of insight, ladies and gents, Nick Gulab will be taking this through 3K in eight minutes, 12 seconds. And that is 13 minutes, 40 pace for the finish. So we'll keep you posted on those times. But if you are on the top bend, if you are at the 150 mark or the 200, please do come up to the cones. Let's give some atmosphere for these athletes and let's get them through these laps. 
And I am now joined by our race winner from race number six, Sam Gabrasilassi, Belgrave Harrier, hometown hero. And I'm a massive fan. Congratulations for the win there, mate. Talk me through the race in your head. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just great fun to get out, um, go for a run. Uh, yeah, thank God for the ability to sort of like move my legs and, and, and hold on. Uh, this last year has been 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 a great one. Um, you know, uh, nice training morning. with sort of like an incredible incredible group here in Battersea uh, Cottage. Uh, many thanks to sort of like Mark Lloyd uh, and uh, others who I sort of like train with. Um, it's really a place where sort of like iron sharpens iron. Uh, really encouraged by Belgrave, the, the club that I run for, uh, by Steve Gardner and, and others, uh, Charlie Dickinson, who sort of like support me, who, who encourage me. And of course, the community, uh, the community of runners who are also supportive. Uh, it's competitive, but it's also um, a, a place, a space where uh, we are encouraged to sort of like be the best version of ourselves. Uh, yeah, so just great fun. Uh, this race was quite tough going out there, um, especially once um, yeah, the excellent pacer um, uh, yeah, went off to the side, but uh, yeah, it was just a case of just holding on, um, you know, uh, having faith that I'd, I'd get round to the, to the finishing line. Um, glad that I didn't blow up uh, this time. Uh, it's a feature of mine as a relative new runner. Uh, but yeah, really encouraged by all the cheers, by all the support, the family, of friends, um, and, and of other runners. Mate, I've got to say, the humility coming out of you right now is incredible. I'm, I'm in awe of you, that, of what you're able to do on the track, but the man you are off the track. And I think I speak for many people that know you, of how much respect we have for you. Thank you so much for coming down tonight, today, Sam. And I can't wait to see you in that A race next time. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. See you, mate. Thank really you. appreciate it. So great words there from Sam Gabrasilassi. But back to the action. And Nick Gulab is right out in front, pacing these athletes as we go through 1,200 meters there in about 313 with Ocean Perrin tucked in on the rail on his shoulder. Olympian Ben Connor is active second, and then the Mohammed brothers tucked in in third and fourth. And this breakaway group has just started to get away slightly. I thought this might happen with the second group being headed up by the Highgate boys of La Petra and Allen. Dom Nolan tucked in on the rail with Lewis Jagger on his shoulder. Alcock, Jarvis, Dempsey, everyone's in there, Becker. Yeah, while you were doing that interview, I just had a couple of minutes to watch it, and it was amazing. <laughs> fast, didn't they? They're down about really boys. Really fast. Yeah, this uh, this race is going to really hot up, and in a way, I'm 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 excited to see how this first group um, how that pans out because some of the athletes in that second group, you know, Jacob Allen, Dom Nolan, Lewis Jagger, La Petra, fantastic, talented athletes, and they've got the ability to run well inside that 14 minutes. So. We'll have to see how this one pans out over the next six or seven or eight laps or so. But still Gulab on the front. Perrin, if you know Perrin's, uh, if you know Perrin's running, you will know that he is not afraid to put himself out there and throw the kitchen sink at it. And he will find himself very much at the front of many races. So I know that this pace will stay honest. And it's great to see, to see the Welshman come down today at Battersea and send it for 12 and a half laps. Who are you fancying in that top group? can't rule out Ben Connor. He's got Olympic pedigree. He's fastest in the field at 13.19. Yeah. He's been around the block. He's done. He's done everything. He's been a world champs in Doha. He's, he's, he's run really. He's run sub 28 at Highgate, and he's run the fastest time in this field. I'm interested to see how he's going to win this race, though, because he stepped up to the marathon. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a few years since he's done a 5K. Ocean Perrin is the 3,000, 5,000 meter runner. He's going to have that gear. You know, that finishing kick. Can Ben could Ben Connor take the sting out of it? Is Ocean Perrin going to be out hang on? Or do one of the Mohammed brothers have something to say about it? What do you think? It's a tough one. You can't underestimate what marathon training does to your legs, the speed for the track, you know. But I would say, yeah, Ben Connor's looking really strong. Absolutely. And I've just realised that whilst we're stood up, the live stream viewers can just see the bottom half of us. So why don't we have a sit down and relax for two minutes? But back in that second group, it's Alan who's now at the front with La Petra tucked in on the rail. Dom Nolan wearing the saw kit. And around the outside, Cam Allen probably wearing one of the most flamboyant vests I've ever seen. I think that might be a Sky vest. He's wearing the floral number. 
If I was Alan, I'd be trying to not just lead that group and pace them all, you know, to eventually go round and that's a great close point. that back. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I think Alan, Alan's in... Alan's a great, fantastic runner, right? He had a massive breakthrough year last year. Many people might not know, but he actually got injured in his last race this season. He was in a 1500 metres, hit the bell, one lap to go, and he fell over. And he was on for a great run. And I, I believe he got injured from that fall. And most of the winter, I saw him in a moon boot. I didn't see him mu running much. But he's worked his way back. He's back on the miles. He's fit. And he was one of the first athletes from some areas that said he was up for it. He looks like he's talking to some people. I think he's actually said, can you maybe take the lead for a few laps? Yeah, Good I think smart move to be honest. I think these athletes in that group have got to be realistic. Are they going to be able to challenge a 13-19 runner for the win? Or do they want to run smart and run a PB of 13-40 and change? Yeah. So I think that's what's probably being spoken about in there. And hopefully these athletes can work together and all come home in shiny new PBs. But here's Cam Allen who's on the front of that group. But back to the front of this race with six laps left to run. It's still pairing in the front with Connor on his shoulder. It's the younger Mohammed brother, Zach, that's in third with his older brother, Mohammed, further back, who's now found himself in a little bit of no man's land. And these three are well away. Gulab's done his job at the front. Fantastic work from those paces and fantastic work from all of the paces tonight. And we'll get a split as they come round next time at the 3,000 metre mark. And that'll give us a real indication of what we're on for at the finish. But it's still pairing out in front. Just leaning into his stride, slightly looking real smooth with Ben Connor. A contrast in styles for second, with Zach Mohammed tucked in on the rail for third. Mohammed Mohammed looking strong, still in fourth, slightly off the pace. And further back in the field, it's still Allen. Uh, we've got Cam Allen, Jacob Allen, Dan Jarvis, they're all there. No change in the orders. So as they come down the 3K mark, this is going to be a really interesting split. We were looking for about 8.12. We might just slightly be off that mark, but it, for athletes of this level, shouldn't be too much to bring back. Thank as God. they go through 8.14, 8.13 on the clock. So we're looking at about the 13.45 range, which is very, very fast running for these guys. Could be looking at a burn up on the last 800 or so. But it's now Zach Mohammed who takes up the lead from Perrin. So it's Mohammed from Perrin and Connor in third. Mohammed Mohammed still in fourth and further back. Jarvis has taken up the lead from Allen and starts to charge that group. Starts to turn the screw and opens up a short gap on that chasing pack. I think Jarvis is such a bold runner, so I'm not surprised if it was going to be anyone from that second group. I think it would have been Dan and I think it would just be really interesting now. Who's feeling strong? Who's feeling good? Who's going to go with that? Looks like there's a few, but for the most part, they're sticking as that group. Looks like Jarvis is on the hunt. Ben Olcock from Bennington County has had a fantastic winter. Don in the cap backwards is after him. Lewis Jagger, the Sheffield athlete, done a bit of time out in the States in the NCAA. He's running well this winter with a PB of 14.02. He's on the chase for Alcock. Dom Nolan, our 10,000 metre champion, is in there as well. But back to the front with four laps left to run. This race, is, this race is starting to really hot up. And Perrin is back on the front, on the rail, with Zach Mohammed on his shoulder and Connor. Connor's gone unnoticed this entire race. And I'm just waiting for the moment that he puts the hammer down. But down the back straight, Zach Mohammed is starting to open up as they approach. Three and a half laps left to run. It's Mohammed. Connor has followed the move from Perrin in third. And Mohammed Mohammed is starting to close in on these three very slightly. Further back to fifth, it's still Jarvis from Olcock and Jagger and Nolan. But it's still Zach Mohammed with Connor on his shoulder, chomping at the bit to go past. Perrin is still there on the rail, taking the shortest route. A puff of the cheeks from Perrin as the gap starts to open between Connor and Ocean. Connor has a look inside him and sees and likes what he sees. It's still Zach Mohammed, the youngster, one of the youngest in the race, taking it on by the scruff of the neck with Connor the Olympian on his shoulder, with three laps left to run. Further back in the field, Scott Halstead having an absolute stormer of a run just in behind Dom Nolan. As the pace really starts to tell on some of these athletes and the gaps start to appear, and this is where the money is shown, and money is what these boys are racing for. Guaranteed at least a grand, plus whatever you lot can raise. 
Zak Mohammed is after the money, but it's Olympian Ben Connor that's going to have something to say about it. With 1k left to run. 11.09 on the clock. It's still Zak Mohammed from Connor. Further back to Perrin and Mohammed Mohammed. Dan Jarvis rallying for fifth. Now it's going to be very interesting here, Becker. Can Ben Connor roll back the years? Go back to his NCAA days? Can he f find that kick to come over and over the top of Zach Mohammed? I don't know, you know, I don't know how his finish is going to go, but I think he's just ran this so smart for me. His experience has shone through in that respect, and he's just, yeah, he's ran it really, really well, in my opinion. It's still Mohammed on the rail, taking the shortest route with Ben Connor on his shoulder. We're less than 700 metres left to go in this one. Last time for this race, ladies and gents, in the stadium. Let's get behind them as they come round. Connor comes out wide, makes the pass on Mohammed, opens up the gate, and there's a gap there, I think. That might be it. I think he's broken him. Connor's pulling away. Down goes the hammer from Connor. 600 metres left to run. The Derby AC athlete. The New Balance athlete, away he goes with five metres clear of Zach Mohammed. His older brother Mohammed Mohammed has come over Ocean Perrin for third. But into the home straight for the Panama time, it's going to be Ben Connor who's going to take the bell. Further back in the field, Dan Jarvis rallying very well. Incredible run from Dan, look at that, he's done so well to close that gap and he is Looks like he might just get into fourth. 12.47 for Ben Connor at the bell. Zach Mohammed four or five seconds down. But Connor is away and gone. 10 metres clear. 15 metres clear. 20 metres clear. And away he goes. Down the back straight this final time. Ben Connor, fresh off the back of the Tokyo Olympics, showing his class here down tonight in southwest London. With 250 left to run. Let's have a look at the clock, 13.18 on the clock. It's almost like Phil Norman last year. It's Ben Connor from Zachary Mohammed, from his older brother. Dan Jarvis running well in four. And round the final turn, Ben Connor is away and gone. Keep an eye on the clock, ladies and gents. What a fantastic performance from these athletes. Zach Mohammed running well for second. And Mohammed Mohammed battling with Dan Jarvis for third. But Ben Connor for the win. 13.48 unofficial. Takes the win in the elite men's race at Comeback 5000. Zachary Mohammed. Dan. Dan Jarvis now fighting for that third place. Zachary Mohammed just on the button for 14 minutes for second. Mohammed Mohammed will take third in 14.06. Dan Jarvis for four for 14.08. Ben Alcock's going to come through next, just holding off Dom Nolan in and around 14.15, with our long-time leader Ocean Perrin coming over the line for 14.17, as the rest of the field, Lewis Jagger, Jeremy Dempsey, and Alex Petra finish over the, come over the finish line, all inside 14.30. What do you make of that? <laughs> I think Connor showed his class, didn't he? Yeah. And he, he has that gear still. As Cam Allen rounds the final turn, let's get behind these athletes, ladies and gents. A fantastic effort from everyone who's towed the line tonight. And that image of the finish line with all of our athletes spread out on the floor shows how hard they've worked. Yeah, Alexander Chow on the, on the YouTube has put, class is permanent. Couldn't put it better myself class is permanent and Ben Connor showed that today. Absolutely, he, he did roll back the years and, and I'd be interested to, to see anyone on the, on, the, on the stream for YouTube if you can come through with a last 600 metre split, I'd love to know that but I think his last lap was in and around the 60 mark which is very very strong running at that point in a 5k but we will get a conversation with Ben once he's had his presentation but if you thought that was exciting you wait and see for this women's race. I think we now have a clip coming from our sponsor, ProDirect. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com.
So that was the men's elite race at the Comeback 5000. That one's done and dusted. Very exciting action there. And that tees us up nicely for our finale, the women's elite race. Now we will run through the start list in a few moments when they are nearer the time. We've still got about uh, seven minutes until that one goes off. But this women's race, I'll tell you a bit of backstory, ladies and gents, about this, about this race. It was actually one of the hardest races to bring together. I think I messaged the top 30 in the UK directly um, and big up to all the athletes that aired me. Uh, but, it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had about four or five athletes in the race and we were really worried that we were only going to have an elite men's race. And lo and behold, these ladies that are running tonight have put their foot, best foot forward. And all of a sudden, we were inundated with interest. And the race that we've got on our hands here, I think, you correct me if I'm wrong, Becca, this is one of the best domestic 5,000 meter women's races I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah, I've been so, so excited for this race. Um, I think, yeah, as you mentioned, some trouble filling the field to start with. And it's a, it's a tough time of year. There's a lot of people on training camps, um, but yeah, as, as we mentioned earlier, there's no better session to test your fitness and prove yourself than doing a race like this. So yeah, kudos to the girls that have turned out. It's, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> Absolutely, I cannot wait. And I, I'm not even gonna bother trying to predict who I think will win this one. Um, it's gonna be an interesting one, that's for certain. Just had a message from our bar staff. If you are in the vicinity, and the message, to be fair, was, was 15 minutes ago before the, before the elite men's race, but we had 20 beers left. Uh, now, our beers are free, so if you want a beer, we've got 20 left, probably not 20 now, but go and head down to the bar, grab yourselves one. Uh, we don't ask for payment, we just ask you to consider donating to our prize pot fund, which is evenly split between our two elite winners. So Ben Connor would have gone home there with 1,000 pounds in his back pocket, plus half of whatever you lot raise. And I actually have no idea what that mark is currently at. So Steve, if you could come and let me know, that'd be grand. Yeah, I did ask um, a while ago if we had an update on that. No idea. So it'll be a lovely surprise for the runners, I think. <laughs> Absolutely, let's hope it's, uh, let's hope it's a, a decent amount for these guys. But all of that money goes to the athletes towards their careers and funding uh, their future sporting achievements. But these elite ladies are starting to gather now. Nerves will be sitting in. I should probably not say that. You'll be fine, ladies. And we will run through the start list in one moment. So, ladies and gents, we're going to introduce our elite women's race now. I sound like a broken record, but I've been waiting a year for this to come together. And from the inside out, our first athlete, we're going to introduce Victoria Kenny from Oldershot Farnham District, Neve Brown from Thames Hare and Hounds, Bethany Murray from Tombridge AC, Verity Hopkins. From Basingstoke, Kate Eastley. The Cambridge Harrier, Holly Dixon. Oregon Duck alumni, sub-16 performer. Debuted in the marathon with a 2.34. Philly Bowden. Now professional for Adidas. Recently run a half marathon PB of 68.12. Coming into this race as one of the favorites. Samantha. Harrison recently won the podium 5k inside 16 minutes ran a massive 3000 meter PB of 909 at Watford last week it is Megan Davies one to watch for sure coming out of Shaftesbury and Barnet Georgia Bell 
After a fantastic winter and a sub-16 runner in her own right, the Belgrave Harrier, Sarah Astin. Running out of the Brian Phoenix stable, Tara Beige. Local girl from Guildford, it's Susanna Monk. Travelling here from the Midlands, the Birchfield Harrier, Hannah Robinson. Based out in the States, graduate from the University of Utah, now professional for Puma, the fastest in the field with a PB of 1545. Poppy Tank. Coming off the fastest leg of the National Road Relays, silver medalist at the National Cross Country, and one to watch in this one, Eleanor Bolton. Second place here last time behind Nesbitt. Massive, massive winter under her belt. It's Hannah Owen. Running her debut over the 5,000 metres on the track from Brighton Phoenix, Maya Hardman. One of the youngest in the field from Loughborough University will debut over the 5,000 metres on the track tonight. Was third at the Bucks Cross Country. It's Harriet Bloor. One of the youngest in the field is at under 20. Based in Scotland, so travelling a fair old way tonight. Will debut over 12 and a half laps. It's Josie Wren Golder. And rounding off the field after a solid winter and a big run at the under 20 British Cross Country Champs from Reading AC, it's Mia Wardman. Quiet for the start, please. This is your elite race for the women. And we're away in the final race of the Comeback 5000. I'm sure you'll agree with me that this race is hotting up to be something special. And we are very grateful in a pacemaker in the form of Rose Harvey, who's going to take this race out at 15.24 pace. And lo and behold, Sam Harrison is not hanging about already. We've also got Kirsty Fraser, who will be pacing a 15.55 mark in the mid pack of this field. So we've got two pacemakers, which is great to see. And Sam Harrison already through 200 metres in 33 seconds, not hanging about. Congratulations, Ben. Thank um, you. 
Yes, talk us through that. Um, yeah, it was really good. Um, I haven't been on the track since 2019, so it was uh, kind of nice to get out there after uh, a couple of years of the marathon. So it was nice to try and find a little bit of speed, especially on them last couple of laps. I enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah, and how how is that? Like, I know everyone talks about that going up to the marathon and then that, the, yeah. how hard it can be to drop back down again. <laughs> Do you find that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it has been nice. It's taken a few sessions to find a bit of a 400 turnover. But yeah, I'm enjoying it again, but it'll be a couple more track races and then back to the marathon. So okay. yeah, it's not, not hanging around on the track for too long. Yeah, and what was the sort of incentive for this race? I mean, what, um, prize money? No, because well, I, well, it's per fit perfectly for me because I'm going on training camp tomorrow. Um, so it was nice to get the race in before and then I'm back a couple of days before Highgate, the 10Ks. Okay. So it fit just perfectly for that. Yeah. Four weeks out. Great. <laughs> and then where are you off to on a training camp? Um, San Moritz. San Moritz. Altitude. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. Uh, fly out there tomorrow morning. Nice. So, yeah, so, it was really good. Good, to, good way to start the, the training block, I guess. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks. So this race is really, really interesting at the front. Obviously, we've got Rose Harvey, who's technically second of the race at the moment, pace making at 15.24 pace. As Sam Harrison goes through the first kilometre in three flat, that's 15 dead pace for Sam Harrison out in front. She's in shape. She knows she's fit, and she's coming down here to do the business. Back in that second group, in behind the pace, we have Poppy Tank, followed by Hannah Irwin with Eleanor Bolton just on her shoulder. And then Kirsty Fraser doing a fantastic job as our second pacemaker with Megan Davies, Sarah Astin, and the rest of the field tucked in. I think for me, someone in this race that I've been really, really keen to see is Poppy Tank. Like, followed her while she was out in America, and now she's lucky enough to be signed with Puma, which is just a testament to how well she's been doing while she was out there running for Utah. So it's been really, I've been really looking forward to seeing her back on home soil and seeing how she goes. I'm, yeah, I'm really, I'm really intrigued to see how she goes today. I'm, I'm so happy she's been able to come and race this. I, I, like I say, I, I sent everyone a message on a whim, and I was like, not expecting anything from someone that's based out in the states. And she came back. She said, "Yeah, I'm up for that. I'm up for that." She didn't realise it was on the track at that point. And then when I told her she was, it was on the track, she was even more happier. So, you know, she came into this race and she wanted a fast pace. I know she wanted to pace make her a little bit quicker than what it's currently set, as did Sam Harrison. And, you know, we had to negotiate with these girls and say, look, if we get a pacemaker that fast, that's a female, we're probably going to need someone that's going to want to race it. So, luckily, we've been able to negotiate the pace down to 15.24. It sets up a nice race for a lot of these girls. Yeah. But Sam Harrison is doing, doing the business. She's, she's clearly setting out with intent, and I love that. You know, that creates a story. We don't know what's going to happen in the second half of this race, but absolutely. that's the excitement of, 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 of track and field, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Poppy Tank does, I think, looking at the sheet there she does have the fastest pb but i wouldn't necessarily say some of those times are reflective of what i think these girls can run so you never know that's very true i mean sam harrison she ran 31 just outside 31 minutes i think it's 31 11 at trafford 10k and our coach vince said i think she, I think she went through the first 5k and that in about 15 30 or 15 20 odd so yep. do you know what i mean like <laughs> no reflection on our true 5k 5k pb and Sam, Sam, Sam is quite new to her sport. You know, she's only really been in the sport since 2018, and some of the some of the results that she's been able to pump out over the last years, linked up with Vince Wilson, an established coach in his own right, and oh yeah, you know, debuted 232 in the marathon. Now inside 68:30 for the half, fantastic, fantastic runner. And tonight she is showing a clean set of heels as she goes through that mark there in 5:30 on the clock, and this will be the 2k mark on the back straight. Yeah, another athlete to look out for is uh, Hannah Irwin. She's in that group of three, just uh, in the second group. Um, she was second last year to Jenny Nesbitt, so she will um, be probably trying to not come second again. Yeah, so. she's she's coached by James T up in Cardiff, and she said that she was up for that 15:24 pace, and she's round. She's she's overtaken Rose Harvey, and just as I say that, she might return that place. But Sam Harrison through the 2K mark there in 6:07, so that was a 3:07 kilometer. So still good pacing at the front, and that gap is only getting bigger at the back uh, in second and third with yeah. Irwin now taking up the run-in from Tank as Rose Harvey does her job. Thank you so much for your help, Rose. 
So it's now Sam Harrison clear out in front with Hannah Irwin and Poppy Tank further back to Eleanor Bolton and the rest of the field with Megan Davies, Sarah Astin. I can see Philly Bowden is still in there with good company around her. Another athlete there, I think she's in fifth currently, Georgia Bell. She is um, a real dark horse in this race, I'd say. She Blast I, from the past. Blast from the past, no, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, she really, I see a lot of sort of park run and run through results, but I, I don't know if she's run on the track that much since her time in America. So again, she's done a 16.10 just this month, I believe, at the Bushy Park park run so it'll be really really great to see how that transpires on the track today yeah you know 203 800 meter runner in a day on the track uh went out to the states almost it looks like you know looking at a pair of 10 record it looks like running mad taking a back seat when she came back from the states you know as we grow old and we go through our 20s people get full-time jobs and live their lives she's had a bit of a renaissance with the sport and runs 16 10 at a park run do you know what i mean so clearly in shape and uh, probably the first time she's put spikes on in a couple of years so I'll be very interested to see how she manages this race and as I say that she's on the front of that chasing group chasing down Poppy Tank in front of Megan Davies and yeah. that's not bad company is it not Pretty bad company good. at all Pretty good. but back to the front of this race no change in the order it's still Sam Harrison out in front with Hannah Irwin chasing her down entering the straight Poppy Tank in that Puma kit looking strong as she enters the same straight she'll come down this time with six laps left to run So Eleanor Bolton has just tucked herself into a nice group there. Interesting to see Philly Bowden just taking a sit on that group. Not doing any of the work, shielding from any wind. Not that you get any wind at Batsy Park, but hey. But still Harrison out the back. This has been a real, real show of class so far from Harrison. From gun to tape, didn't worry about the pacemaker, has just set a stall early and gone for it. Yeah, that is a really confident run. Like, cannot knock that whatsoever. And whatever that clock says at the end, I suppose it don't matter too much if you're that far in front. It could be a good payday for Harrison as she is now 60, 70 metres clear of Irwin. But Irwin's rallying. She's still running strongly. She's still got one eye on the clock, one eye on Harrison. And if she had a third eye, she'd probably have it on Poppy Tank as well. As that group start to close those metres on the state side athlete, it's still Georgia Bell. Just checking her watch there with Megan Davies on her shoulder. Bolton on the rail with Astin on her shoulder. Philly Rowden bringing up the rest of that group. Holly Dixon also in there. So great, great domestic group of athletes in front of us. Really great to see that. Love that. Philly Bowden, someone else that's gone up to the marathon recently. So. I, d I wonder if this will be a bit of a shock to the legs to drop down in that distance, but she she's looks like she's smashing it so far. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she tra transitions back to the track. Like Connor, can she uh, put the hammer down in the final stages as we go through 3K in this race? Two kilometres left to run, five laps on the board. I think that group went through in just about 9.39, just under 9.40. No. As Georgia Bell makes a break from this group, this is a story worth selling from Georgia Bell. A return to track racing, and she is laying the hammer down against some unbelievable established national and international athletes as she starts to approach Poppy Tank. Does she take a sit on her shoulder or does she take the pass? But it's still Harrison as she enters the straight. She'll have a mile left to run. Four laps on the what on the board. Had her in rounding the turn in front of the commentary box and it's Georgia Bell who makes the pass on Poppy Tank Sarah Astin the Jeff Watkin athlete follows suit Astin's had a massive winter banging in the miles Sam Harrison through there in 10.32 by the looks of things as Tank comes under a little bit of pressure from Astin and Bell they turn the screw down this home straight Megan Davies now on hot on her heels It's going to be interesting now. Sam Harrison's probably going to deal with, deal with a little bit of traffic in this race. You know, as, as a racer yourself, Becca, how would you how would you manage that? Oh, probably just hope that they move out, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. But it doesn't always happen. And I think you just got to see it as a bit of a confidence boost when you do have to go around someone. Must be hard lapping people, but that's what it's about. She's racing in its, in its purest form. And Harrison is doing just that tonight. As some of these younger athletes are rounding the final bend into the home straight. They will have uh, four laps left to run as well. 
But Harrison is on the charge. Let's get behind her, ladies and gents. I want to hear it. Harrison with three laps left to run. Really good battle on for third with Bell. Still at the front of this group. She's taken three with her in the form of Astin. Holly Dixon, the youngster from Cambridge Harriers. And look at that from Philly Bowden, the marathoner, rolling back the years. Rolling back the years to her days when she ran sub 33 minutes at Highgate. Here she is tonight, coming off the back of a 2.34 marathon debut and mixing it with the track girls. Megan Davies still there, recently ran sub 16 at podium and she's having a strong run tonight. As we tick over 12.15 on the clock, Harrison in a league of her own tonight, still, still about 100 metres clear of Irwin and that gap is growing by every 100 metres. Harrison comes down with a K left to run, 12.26 on the watch. One thing's for certain is Harrison is on for a big PB tonight, her outright 5,000 metre PB is 16.15 and she is going to smash that out of the park, taking the 16 minute barrier with her. Harrison is just so, so impressive. Every time she comes past this commentary box, she's not showing any signs of tiring up, just stronger and stronger with every lap. And to do that by yourself is just amazing. And she will come down this time. She'll have 800 metres left to run, two laps of the circuit left for Harrison, as will Irwin as she approaches the straight. Look at this group. That race for third is hotting up nicely and that order has not changed. Bowden just just sitting on the back of it, stalking these athletes in the form of Aston, Bell and Dixon. As Bell looks up and has a look down the straight, she will have two laps to left to run with these girls hot on her heels. But Harrison down the back straight as she approaches 600 left to run. It's hers to win and lose today. Harrison enters 600 left to run, strides through that mark effortless, effortlessly with 13.42 on the watch. She will hear the bell this time. This is where we need to get behind her ladies and gents and carry her through this last 500 metres. So it's Harrison who will hear the bell this time. 400 left to run. She is away and gone, but moves are being made down the back straight, ladies and gents. Philly Bowden has taken up third from Bell. Aston is being stretched and Dixon is still there. Yeah, I think that's been Philly's tactic by the looks of things. Sit in that group and go towards the end and she's executed that so well. Bell is giving her a really, really good run for her money. With Aston in the chase. And this race is really hotting up in first, second and third. Irwin looks like she's clear, but Bowden might have something to say about that as they come down for the Panorama time. But look at the back straight. Harrison's away. She's almost half a lap in front. 200 left to run for the marathon specialist. Showing the track girls how it's done. Harrison in a league of her own. Harrison, 15.05 with 1.50 to go. So this is going to be a spectacular run from her. Could be inside 15.30 for Harrison. She goes to the arms. She drives the legs and away she goes. 100 left for Harrison. 15.20 on the clock. Further back in the field, Georgia Bell. She's dropped the hammer on Bowden. Yeah, showing her 800 form from her younger days. She's, yeah, she's pulled away there and looks like she's got it. And Harrison takes the win in 15.32 unofficial. A lead from gun to tape for Sam there. What a run. And second and third battles going on as Hannah Irwin rounds the final turn into the straight. Georgia Bell goes to the arms and gets after her. Bowden's still there for fourth. But it looks like it's going to be Irwin that holds off Bell. 16 minutes on the clock. Bell is coming. Can she get there? It's going to be Irwin for second, Bell for third, and a fantastic return to the track for Bowden. Holly Dixon coming over the line in 16-14. As the rest of the field 
round the final bends and come down the straightaway. It will be Aston over the line next in 16.25. And our stateside athlete Poppy Tag coming down now in the final few metres, just outside 16.30. Yeah, closely followed by Megan Davies there, fresh off that uh, five road 5K. Yeah, what a run that was, Becca. This is a fantastic race. This. Yeah. And just look at the look at the athletes' faces. You know, athletes are uh, wherever they're at in the race. They're running for their own times, their own PBs and goals. Some of these athletes will be running PBs, whether they're in seventh, eighth, ninth position. So, go on, girls, smash it down that last time straight. Give it everything you've got, and let's keep the noise going, ladies and gents, for these last athletes of the comeback 5000 as they round the final turn. Yeah, Bethany Murray, Thames Hare and Hounds coming in there. She's a local, trains in Battersea Park with the Cottage Group. Really great to see her turning out today. Go on, Beth, finish strong. That's great running from there, from Murray, all the way. Last 50 metres, you've got this. And that rounds off the final few finishes of Comeback 5000. What an afternoon of racing. We will, have an, we will get an interview with our elite women's race winner, Sam Harrison. And if you'd like to join us for an unofficial official after party, we will be going for many beverages at the Pear Tree Cafe. You are more than welcome to join us there. But thank you for everyone that's joined us at Comeback 5000 on the YouTube stream and in person at Battersea Park tonight. We couldn't do it without your support and we will confirm how much money we've raised for our elite race winners as soon as we know it. Every run, every brand, for your first or your fastest. Better every run with ProDirectRunning.com. So ladies and gents, if you did like the action today, if you did enjoy the Combat 5000, please, please, please do dig deep and donate to our prize pot uh, fund that we are going to be splitting evenly amongst Ben Connor and Sam Harrison, the winners of our elite races. But they also go home with £1,000 cash each, which we are very grateful from our sponsors, Predator Running and TripAdvisor. We wouldn't be able to do these races without our sponsors, but we wouldn't also be able to do it without you guys coming to watch and watching on the stream so sam when you've got your medal and you've done your presentation yeah, really like you've got your breath back you can head up to the commentary gantry and we'll just catch a quick word from you and echoing what i said earlier if you are staying around batsy park please do join us for an after party at the pear tree cafe where they have takeaway pizzas burgers aperol spritzes whatever your tipple is in proper southwest london style
So over on the podium, we do have our first three finishers in the women's elite race. In third place, we have Georgia Bell. Coming in second, we have Hannah Irwin. And your champion of the Combat 5000 in the elite women's race is Sam Harrison. Just before we grab an interview with Sam Harrison, the, women of the, uh, the winner of the women's elite race, just like to do a few thank yous. Uh, if you are still in the stadium, I'd just like to have your attention. If we could have a short round of applause for all of the volunteers, officials, first aiders, health and safety, you name it, anyone that's come down here off their own back to make comeback happen. We couldn't do it without you and we thank you so much. So thank you to all of those volunteers. Also a massive thank you to the team at Belgrave Harriers. Without you and your track and your expertise in this area, again, these things would not happen. Thank you to the team at Friday Night Under the Lights. Ben and Keith, thanks for your help setting this up, getting the race entry sorted, making sure that we had all the correct licenses, making sure that we don't get in trouble with the old bill and uh, pulling these things together. And thank you, of course, to Days Brewing for bringing down your lovely 0% beers. Summit for bringing down your teas, coffee, snacks, and whatnot. Pro Direct Running for financially making this viable, bringing down your creative team and just being general good eggs in the build-up. And thank you to TripAdvisor for likewise making this financially viable and for your support today and for the future. Comeback 5000 is going one direction, ladies and gents, and it's very exciting to bring you along on the journey. And finally, thank you to my co-commentator, Becca Howard, who is smashing a ham and cheese croissant at the moment, so she can't talk on comms. But thank you, Becca, for your expertise on comms today. You've been a pleasure to commentate with the comeback once again.
certainly not least, we are joined by the Women's Elite winner, Sam Harrison. What a run. I was so inspired. Every time you came past, you just didn't look like you were getting tired. Did it feel like that? or? Oh, yeah. I definitely felt tired, especially <laughs> in that heat. To, especially when it got to that last mile. There was four laps ago, and I was like, okay, I'm starting to feel really exhausted now. <laughs> yeah. And what was, the, what was the sort of plan coming into today? What was the <laughs> tactic? Um, I didn't really have any tactics, to be honest. I don't really tactically plan my races. I just go in. I knew I was in pretty good shape, and I'd done a few races recently and done really well, so I just came into it with an open mind and just wanted just to just go on how I feel and just give it my best shot, and it paid off. Yeah, <laughs> and newly um, sponsored by Adidas. How's that all yeah. going? Yeah, really, really well. Yeah, I started, uh, I was sponsored by them back in January this year, and yeah, it's been going great. Obviously, the last three races I've done, I've managed to PB, um, so it's a really positive start. And they must be happy with you with that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <Yeah. laughs> and what's next? Um, I've actually got um, the Vitality 10K, which is on the roads in May, which is Maybank holiday. And then a few weeks after that, it's Highgate um, 10,000. So, Great. Yeah. yeah. And how do you feel? Like 5K, 10K, what's your preference? Uh, 10K, definitely. 5K is... Um, really short really quick for me um yeah. but i'm actually starting to get used to them a little bit now i'm definitely more of the 10k half sort of marathon runner yeah. but 10k has just set me up really nicely for um, 5k sorry set me up really nicely for the 10k's and you know it's just good speed work yeah definitely okay well well done again like <laughs> absolutely amazing to see you out there today and can't wait to see you for the rest of the season I'll lovely let you go and cool down thank you <laughs> Well, ladies and gents, what a afternoon of athletics. I feel like the last five minutes I've just sat still and just nearly fallen asleep. I've just had a high, massive high for four hours and then now we have time to relax. But some of the best UK's talents battling out at Batsy Park and great finales with Sam Harrison and Ben Connor winning. Describe it in three words, Becca. Uh, <laughs> exciting, um, loud and... I don't know what the word is, but it just makes me so excited for the future of the sport. This is the way it needs to go. We all know this, and people like yourself are doing a great job at making that happen. That's great. Great summary there, Becca. So we're going to sign off from Battersea Park. Thank you for tuning in. Please bear with us. We will be back, and the next one will be even bigger and better than this. But we've been Comeback 5000. I've been Lloyd, your commentator, joined by Becca, my co-host. Thanks. See ya. Hi. Every run every brand for your first or your fastest better every run with prodirectrunning.com